appeared um, already. So, yes, madam, you can start now. We, okay. Um, <clears throat> Good morning, Excellencies, distinguished guests, colleagues from the media, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, on behalf of the Center for Policy Dialogue, I would like to extend you a warm welcome to this virtual dialogue on Bangladesh-China Development Cooperation, Experience and Outlook, organized by the Center for Policy Dialogue. We are very happy to have the Honorable State Minister for Foreign Affairs, Mr. Mocharya Alom MP, um, thank you very much for uh, joining today. And we also have two guests of honor. Um, we have uh, His Excellency Mr. Mahabubu Saman, Bangladesh Ambassador to the People's Republic of China, Government of Bangladesh. And we have His Excellency Mr. Li Jiming, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary mm -hmm. To, the, uh, to Bangladesh uh, from People's Republic of China. And additionally, we have a very eminent set of panelists who have deep understanding on the subject. And today we, uh, today's session will be chaired by uh, CPD's founding chair, Professor Rehman Sobhan. He will join in a while. Besides, I can see a number of uh, distinguished participants in the audience. And uh, I'm confident that we are going to have a very lively discussion during the next uh, two hours or so. So before uh, we hear from our panelists, uh, I want to flag uh, some issues on the theme of this dialogue, which will set the context uh, of uh, the discussions that we'll have. Uh, but since we want to hear from our eminent panel, I'm not going to uh, make any PowerPoint presentations and, and I'm going to be very brief. And at, at the outset, I would uh, like to also focus on um, or draw your attention on the theme that uh, our theme is Bangladesh-China Development Cooperation and our specific focus in this session is going to be Chinese investment in Bangladesh. Um, so Bangladesh and China currently maintain a strong bilateral partnership which is strategically important for both the countries. And in recent years, uh, both economic factors and proactive foreign policy have facilitated Sino-Bangladesh economic relations to grow manifold. And this uh, economic relationship spans from aid to trade, to investment, to education and health and beyond. So just to uh, give a few uh, information. Um, I know you all have this information. These are widely available. So what I'm going to um, present is uh, nothing new. But just to uh, recap, uh, first, you know, if you look at the Chinese uh, aid to Bangladesh, it has over the period, it has increased. And since independence of Bangladesh, um, a total of US dollar 3.33 billion um, had been committed. This is between 19, uh, financial year 1972 and uh, 2019. So, uh, and then uh, out of this 3.33 billion committed uh, aid, 2.8 billion had been disbursed until 20th December 2019. And about 99% of this aid, uh, both committed and disbursed, this have been uh, project, project aid. Um, so, in terms of uh, trade also, we have seen that over time the trade uh, relationship has also been strengthened. And in 2018, China um, was the largest trading partner of Bangladesh with a share of uh, about 19% of total trade uh, that is being performed by Bangladesh. And this was almost double the amount of trade with India and more than the trade with USA and Germany combined. Um, so of course there is a huge trade gap in terms of uh, export and import, the you know, uh, trade deficit is there, but uh, both in terms of uh, export and import that's uh, improving and how we can reduce the trade deficit, that's one area where we need to work on. And we also know that under the Asia Pacific Trade Agreement, after 
Uh, earlier, 3,095 Bangladeshi products had uh, duty-free, quota-free access to the Chinese market. Recently, this coverage of duty-free access has been extended to 8,256 products, which constitute 97% of the tariff lines. Now, um, in terms of other uh, softer areas, social infrastructure also, for example, in education and health care, also the, the economic cooperation has been increasing. Over the years, we see the number of Bangladeshi students pursuing how, higher education in China has increased. The activity accelerated following, particularly following the inception of the, uh, inception of the Belt and Road Initiative that you know that has been uh, initiated by the Chinese uh, President Xi Jinping. And also in terms of healthcare, uh, in the recent past, particularly during the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we have seen that China has extended support to Bangladesh to fight against the uh, pandemic by providing medical logistics, comprising uh, surgical masks, medical protective gowns and masks, and testing, um, uh, testing materials, etc. Now, uh, the, uh, coming to the issue of investment, which is the main uh, focus of this discussion, we have seen that Bangladesh, uh, China has uh, become uh, a top investor in Bangladesh. China had, in fact, replaced the United States as Bangladesh's top in investor in 2018. And China had held the position in 2019 as well. Uh, the stop position and the investment was 1.2 billion US dollar, which is roughly 0.4% uh, so of Bangladesh's GDP in 2019. And uh, we also know that Bang uh, China has been investing, um, making investment under the uh, a number of projects uh, under the Built and Growth Initiatives. And uh, Chinese foreign investment that also reached uh, you know, uh, a peak in 2019. Um, so the, this is these are the things uh, I'm going. To, uh, the reason for you know highlighting is that how over time this uh, cooperation has been increasing uh, between the two countries, and we have uh, also seen that during the visit of the Chinese Chinese president um, to Bangladesh in 2016, in October 2016. So there was an understanding. Um, between the two countries to implement a number of various, a number of uh, government to government and business to business projects. And uh, we have um, also seen that the uh, prom promised um, investment was uh, to the tune of 40 billion by China. Um, and uh, uh, out of that, 24.45 billion was in. in bilateral assistance for infrastructure projects and 13.6 billion for joint uh, ventures. In addition uh, to that, uh, another 20 billion uh, was also committed in loan agreements. So uh, we will hear uh, from, uh, uh, we have uh, His Excellency Chinese Ambassador to Bangladesh. We'll hear from, uh, from him uh, the status of those uh, you know, uh, commitments, so what exactly, exactly is happening. Um, but uh, we have seen also that in 2016, Bangladesh and China signed a number of uh, projects that include uh, the Podda Bridge rail track, then um, the power plants in Paira, the digital connectivity and power grid network. So these are all there. And um, we also have seen that this has, the particularly the FDI has increased uh, during uh, financial year 2017 uh, to 2019. So now the sectors where Chinese investments are coming most, traditionally Chinese investment have mostly targeted leather and leather products, textile and wearing, uh, construction and trading in Bangladesh and uh, in, uh, Following the BRI commitments, uh, inward investment received, received a significant uh, boost, and particularly the power sector received uh, a significant uh, amount of investment, and it is at least 80% you know, of the total Chinese FDI, um, both in 2018 and 19. Um, and uh, there are many projects which I'm not going to uh, you know, discuss or uh, discuss at this point in time, in the interest of time, because we want to hear 
mostly from our panelists and uh, distinguished guests. But um, uh, another thing I also want to highlight that as part of Bangladesh government's initiative to establish special economic zones, Chinese economic and industrial zone is being uh, developed in uh, Chittagong, in Anwara Upazila uh, uh, of Chittagong district. And um, so that uh, is another, um, another initiative to uh, increase the investment and to attract Chinese investment. Also, we see Chinese investment in the financial sector uh, in 2018. Uh, we have uh, seen that um, Alipay, which is a concern of Chinese e-commerce and tech giant uh, group of Alibaba that had bought a share uh, stake in Vikash and also Chinese investment in the Dhaka um, stock exchange, uh, the, the Shanghai stock exchange and Shenzhen stock exchange they had, um, they had invested. And now, so there are many other uh, you know, uh, initiatives and many areas for um, in, uh, investment. So, but what I want to you know, now uh, highlight that uh, there are, these are only a few examples, there are many more, but as Bangladesh uh, continues to strive for achieving high growth and sustain its economic growth, the need for more investment will be high. Uh, Bangladesh's infrastructure gap is expected to widen over the next two decades because it is growing and there will be a need for much more investment. And it has been estimated that in 2040, <clears throat> Bangladesh will need an additional um, $10.5 billion for infrastructure financing. So, and also uh, in the coming days, in the next two, three decades, Bangladesh is set to achieve a number of milestones. As we know that Bangladesh is set to graduate from the least developed countries, country category by 2024, and also become um, an upper middle income country by 2031, an advanced country by 2041, uh, so 2040. So these milestones will require, these are of course a matter of pride, but it also, you know, um, brings a lot of challenges. For example, when you graduate from LDC uh, category, then we lose many uh, international support measures which are given to Bangladesh as an LDC, including duty-free access of its products to the global market and concessional funds. Uh, besides, we also know that the Western developed countries are also facing financial stress themselves. And in the context of COVID, this has been more striking COVID-19 uh, pandemic has added further challenge to the progress of the economy across the world. And, um, and in Bangladesh also many achievements which have been made so far uh, are going to be, uh, are apprehended to be you know, undone or lagging behind due to the negative impact of COVID. As, so as a result, the progress towards achieving many global goals, uh, for example, the sustainable development goals and also uh, many um, domestic goals that will be very challenging. So therefore, not only Bangladesh will have to try to uh, move forward, but also to protect many of the successes that which we have already achieved. So, uh, and as the traditional developed countries themselves uh, are facing economic stress, as I have mentioned, the importance of Western support is declining. And we see that new collaboration opportunities to address global problems have emerged uh, due to the South-South cooperation. Uh, and we see that Chinese resources comprise an important component of the South-South cooperation. So in view of the changing global dynamics, and in view of the ongoing pandemic, uh, new opportunities for Sino-Bangladesh collaboration have emerged. And in order to take the advantage of that opportunities, Bangladesh will need to identify new areas of, for prospective investment. Apart from um, physical infrastructure, we also need uh, infrastructure in the social areas. So uh, before I end, maybe we can uh, highlight a few areas where more investment is required. I will particularly highlight the investment need in the social sectors, for example, in case of education, because uh, we have uh, in the literature, we find that China's education cooperation remains 
overwhelmingly bilateral and it comes at at recipient's request so therefore this is a, an opportunity bangladesh will need to identify the priority areas in the education and leverage chinese uh, funding some of the areas could be cooperation in the form of building technical or sector specific skills through vocational training facilities education programs from chinese institutions and also with the growing demand for um, for science technology engineering and mathematics that is stem graduates particularly in the software industry training and program can uh, incorporate incorporate the emerging needs of the society including uh, areas such as artificial intelligence big data robotics biomedical science and other cutting edge technologies in the health sector also we, i have already mentioned that uh, during the covid 19 uh we have seen that the health sector has to be improved significantly and a lot of investment had to be have to be done uh in health uh, sector and uh, for pandemics like covid and also any future diseases uh china can extend its support for, uh, in case of management and coordination and also active surveillance contact tracing community mobilization and infection prevention the other area for investment is also uh, investment in research and development because uh, many countries countries with limited income they don't have uh, adequate investment in research and development and innovation so that's one area we have seen uh, the initiatives uh, where the um intellectual collaborations uh, have started uh, in a limited scale we have seen that uh, the belt and road studies network this was introduced in the second belt and road summit uh, so that's an opportunity to collaborate among the think tanks uh, so how also bangladesh's uh, research and development sectors those organizations which are involved in this can take opportunities and can uh, you know identify areas for further investment uh, we'll have to work on that so um, now i'll end by mentioning one or two issues because uh, those are also quite uh, widely discussed issues because when you talk about chinese investment uh, people bring many also bring many examples across the world people bring examples of africa being examples of uh, sri lanka so the issues of, uh, in this is one of the issue of compliance because some observers feel that chinese investment do not give adequate attention to the governance issues for example compliance with various international standards such as labor environment legal protection procurement good governance practices etc and the quality of investment in fact Uh, will depend how much these concerns are addressed by the government in fact both the government how do they deal uh, the receipt both the the donor country or uh, the investor and also the recipient countries both countries need to work on that and uh, so that the transparency of this investment is required the other issue other challenge is that data availability because um, data on various types of investments what are the terms and conditions of those investment uh, how these are being monitored etc these have to be also transparent and also the data will have to make available for public consumption that will bring uh, confidence among the people and also the confidence uh, to the respective governments so i think uh, with these comments i'll now uh, stop and i'll start the proceedings of the session uh, and uh, so we have a uh, very uh, distinguished uh, eminent panelist today i uh, i will um, call upon them uh, one by one i think you all know them uh, let me just first uh, request ambassador humain kubir who is the president of bangladesh uh, enterprise institute ambassador humain kubir was ambassador uh, has he joined our, uh, i don't 
Has he joined? Rehman sir want to talk. Rehman Suman sir want to talk something. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, okay, I, uh, our chairman, Professor Rehman Suman, um, sir, he has joined. Yes, sir, would you like to say something at the beginning? Yes. Sir, uh, please unmute yourself. Rona. Yes. Sir, it is it is functioning now. Sir, sir, you can yeah you can talk now, sir. Can you hear me? Unmute. Yes, me. sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we can it, hear you, sir. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Speak. Is the who is here at the moment already? Is the ambassador? Sir, you can go ahead. Yes, we can hear you. Is the ambassador and chief guest here? Hello. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Are the ambassador and chief guest here? Yes, sir. They are yes, guests. Sir. Yes, oh. all of them. Oh, okay. uh, and and also the main commentators. Yes, are sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Then I want to put some issues on the table before the commentators and then the main guests speak. Because I think you have uh, the uh, executive director has presented before you a more specific perspective on investment cooperation between Bangladesh and China. But my view is that all of you will need to locate this discussion in a much wider vision of uh, what is going on around us in the world and in the Asian region. And the reason why I say this is that for any of you who have actually read very carefully the uh, speech and the writings of President Xi, which he presented at the second BRI summit, he presented not just a vision of some infrastructure investment opportunities, but really an agenda for a comprehensive global economic partnership where he visualized the restructuring of China and the region's relations on a much wider range of trade, investment, uh, technical cooperation, cultural cooperation. All these were part of a broader vision. And if that is the context in which we are relating to China, then Bangladesh also needs to widen its own vision in our relationship with China. So the issues I think which should come up during the course of the discussion are Bangladesh's own perspective on this. China has been thinking about a wider comprehensive economic partnership and relations with South Asia for a very long time. In fact, when I was writing my book on the rediscovery of the Southern Silk Route and I was in Kunming um, around 1998-1999, I found at that time when I was visiting the uh, uh, departments of transport, railways and highways, that they already had plans for constructing the Asian highway all the way from Kunming down to Myanmar and had begun construction on a super highway. And they were planning a railway connection between Kunming and Singapore, which is now already under implementation. They had a vision for the region and its relationship to the Bay of Bengal and to South Asia in particular. Now, this is what is known as long-term strategic thinking and uh, locating it in the wider context of the economic relationship that we wish to discover. Now, the few things which Bangladesh needs to keep in mind, and I bring this specifically to the notice of the state minister, but also hopefully to the commentators who may seek to elaborate on this, is that the world as it is going to evolve over the course of the next 25 years is going to be an Asian world. And particularly because of the reaction to the COVID crisis, 
uh, in the way in which China, and not just China, but East and Southeast Asia, have in fact rapidly uh, brought this under control, this is going to, it was already the fastest growing region in the world, but it will in fact become a much faster growing region and it will widen the gaps between Asia and other parts of the world. So that the huge big opportunities, both for trade and investment, which are going to in fact be part of Bangladesh's strategic vision, will be around the Asian region. We will hope this will include South Asia, but it will also extend and be very importantly dependent on uh, our relationships with China. Now, the advantage of the relationship with China is that China's great achievement over the course of the last 20 years has been it has constructed deep value chains with all its partner countries in Southeast and East Asia. And that therefore, as, as China has grown, so have all these countries grown. So for all these countries, China is the largest trading partner, not just in terms of imports coming in from China, but also exports. So that for most of the countries of East, and this includes uh, South Korea, this includes Taiwan, this includes um, Australia, New Zealand, Vietnam, for all of them, their largest export markets are in fact in China. Now, this is a very sharp contrast to the circumstances which exist in South Asia, where China may have already become our largest trading partner in terms of imports, but we have very limited exports into China. So that the strategic issue for Bangladesh is to in fact visualize how we are going to develop the same value chains which were created between China and Southeast Asia, between China and South Asia, and more specifically for Bangladesh. And when we are therefore talking about investments, we shouldn't just talk about investment because a lot of investment has come in, a certain amount of aids and loans have come in, but these have all come in in a completely ad hoc manner, dealing with very specific domestic needs of Bangladesh. You have yourself mentioned our need for energy. But the most important way in which you want to visualize inflows of Chinese investment are how it is going to invest in value chains which will connect us to China and which will eventually make China into one of our major export markets. Because China is now already, in fact, Beijing is the largest global market. And in the next 25 years, Asia led by China is going to in fact be contributing to 50% of global GDP growth. So that huge, huge opportunities are really there if we in fact think this through and we in fact design our investment strategies. So it isn't just enough for us to look at Bangladesh's investment needs in relation to Bangladesh, it is for us to look to Chinese investments coming in to in fact target the investment opportunities which are going to open up. Now the opening up of these investment opportunities are going to relate to the ongoing restructuring of the Chinese economy, which is very rapidly moving from a low tech labor intensive economy around which its earlier GDP growth took place to a high tech, uh, capital intensive, um, more capital intensive oriented economy. And therefore it is going to be vacating a great deal of domestic market space and global market space in relation to these opportunities which are actually opening up. Now, these are all in a way abstract issues, which very few people in Bangladesh, I would imagine certainly not the, uh, uh, not the policy making area of Bangladesh, uh, have really given much thought. So what I would certainly hope that the discussions will focus on is how we can then work out partnerships with China 
and China's institutions to look at this broader area of comprehensive economic partnership, which relates investments in infrastructure, investments in, uh, in, uh, in the industrial and service sector, which are to a considerable extent related then to growth opportunities, which will not only be specific to China, but will be also related to the growth, which is in fact developed, has emerged in East and Southeast Asia and also in South Asia, because China's vision is not limited to Bangladesh. It is a global vision and it is a pan-Asian vision, whatever may be its temporary problems uh, with its large neighbor. After all today, uh, China is one of India's largest trading partners, whatever may be going on in the borders. So that they have notions of the nature of the type of investments which will need to be made in these countries in order to relate this to China's own needs. And we need to in fact address this. So the, the last point I wish to leave with you is that essentially what we should be thinking about, and I bring this to the special attention of the Chinese ambassador, is that we should identify institutions. I would certainly like to hope that CPD will play a very important role in this to in fact partner with institutions. I have already been part of a global network of think tanks which met uh, uh, in parallel with the global summit who were designed to come together to think of a comprehensive economic partnership at a global level. I would in fact like to invoke that challenge and to in fact get the ambassador to identify specific institutions in China, which can collaborate with us to in fact actually look to the future, which will in fact give us a landscape of how China's uh, own economy is restructuring, both in terms of its uh, global landscape and its domestic needs. And we will in fact consider how Bangladesh can in fact actually access these opportunities as they emerge. And the terms and conditions on which we access this may depend on the very nature of the investment. It may well be that it will come in in some considerable part as ODA. Some of it may come in as soft loans. Some of it may even come in as hard loans. Some of it may even follow the uh, uh, idea which was developed with, by China in Guadur and in uh, Sri Lanka, where the idea of China, in fact, coming in and becoming a big infrastructure investor and then becoming an equity partner, and in fact, taking on the risk responsibilities for creating investment zones, which would in fact make effective utilization of the port and effective util and would in fact generate export opportunities from there. These are all only possible if you are thinking these things strategically so that you will then anticipate your investment needs in relation to China. You will structure the terms and conditions on which you bring in investment from China, depending on the particular nature and the market circumstances of the particular investment. And these will all be done in a joint collectively thought out way in which the think tanks will put a whole series of ideas, both of an informative and an of a policy operational nature before their respective policy makers. These are the thoughts which I think all of you should keep in mind rather than just limit yourself to the very much narrower discussion of investment between Bangladesh and China. Thank you. I hope, uh, this will be useful to you when you, in fact, go ahead with the discussion. Thank you. Thank you, sir, uh, for those words. Uh, I think uh, the uh, context of the session has been well laid out. Uh, now we got a, you know, a overview of what are the issues on the table to discuss today. Now, I would like to request, I think Ambassador Kumain Kubir is yet to join. 
Let me now invite Dr. A.K. Inamul Haq, who is a professor, Department of Economics, East West University, to make his remarks. I would like to request to keep your remarks within five minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak on this. Uh, the Chinese-Bangladesh uh, uh, issue, then I think I, I, I echo some of the comments made by the Professor Raman Stoban, particularly, that uh, while we discuss the China-Bangladesh issue, there are certain uh, topics that always flag out. But I think the long-term strategic issues are important. And uh, my own feeling is that it's not that uh, totally we are outside of is that Bangladesh government has also thought about it. I'm pretty sure about it. But to, to start with, I think uh, when we look into the, uh, the pattern of investment China has done so far, so far except some joint venture, most of the investment are within the government sectors. In other words, in the infrastructure with the cooperation of the government. So I think strategically it is important that Bank China expands it to other sectors. Professor Roman Suban mentioned something very important that China is going to uh, divest their, some of their investment from certain labor intensive sectors to others and Bangladesh would be a very good place for it. Uh, just to give an example, the Uttara economic zone uh, has already been one of these uh, toy factories uh, that have started. In other words, remember China initially was the toy producer of the world. And a lot of time right now, as they're moving into high-tech industry, there are opportunities for, for Bangladesh to actually look into that into investment sector and use our zones to con convert some of these market access they have with the global world into an investment and business uh, partnership with China. And that is something that Bangladesh businesses should look in. So what I'm trying to push into our mind is that it's not just the government initiative, it's also a private to private initiative that becomes important. And in dealing with the private and attracting private investment, I think the strategic goal should be a little bit wider than just between government to government cooperation. And when you say wider, I would echo some of the points, particularly the issue of uh, people to people connectivity. So far, I have, so far we have been doing business with China and China has been one of the largest uh, importing, you know, Bangladesh is the largest importing country from China. But if I go back, I give you an example for, for people to listen to, which is uh, 2004, I was in Vietnam and we were looking at the shrimp industry in Vietnam. And the first thing Vietnamese producers were telling me that I was discussing the where do you export? And they were saying most in 2004, Vietnam was looking at China as a big market. Our private businesses and investment and trade actually did not look into this. Still today, we are looking at the uh, markets in the, in the West, that is our largest uh, export market. So I think that connectivity should be, uh, should be uh, widened. And I think that is where strategic goal is important. What I mean by strategic goal, is that connectivity between institutions with Bangladesh and Chinese, not just academic, but business institutions, giving them opportunity to know each other. As we have seen for so far, Bangladeshi students are going to China. I would also encourage Chinese students to come to Bangladesh because that always bring and create opportunities for investment in future. So that seed of investment should be brought in through those corporations. Research is another area where both countries should cooperate. And you have mentioned, uh, the, uh, Dr. Fahmida has mentioned about the STEM, particularly in STEM education, uh, the Chinese dominance is well worth it. We have to recognize this uh, globally. Uh, if we look into the STEM education, the, the dominance of Chinese education is very strong. And that strength we should, uh, we should harbor and we should bring those cooperation into reality. In terms of some of these uh, issues, particularly with BRI, some of the criticisms uh, and some of the fla issue flagged by Dr. Farmida is important. She has mentioned one thing, which is about the governance issue of the Chinese investment. And I agree uh, that these flagging are important, but at the same time, it's a flagging from both sides. Many of the, uh, you know, I still remember there was a, there was the Asian Development Bank country director in Bangladesh. And she was in a seminar mentioned that if we had to wait for 
corruption to get out of Bangladesh, then we cannot make in India. So while we have to work on those issues, we have to look, think carefully that the investment has to be there. Uh, on the Sri Lankan issue, I mentioned this in, in a meeting in Guangdo two years ago, and that's a very important one. If you look into the investment issue, uh, converting investment, converting debt into equity, these are strategies not really unknown. But I think uh, the, the, the global connectivity is important. Bangladesh, I would say strategically, only 69 kilometers away from China and zero kilometer away from India. So that strategic advantage of Bangladesh should be looked into both by Bangladesh and China. And because this is a country which has uh, the two largest economy around us, we have to be careful on that because there are two largest economy around us and there are big partners. So in terms of investment opportunity, while China is looking into Bangladesh, it's not just infrastructure, infrastructure may be important, but at the same time, business opportunities should be expanded. Uh, just to, before we, we go, uh, before I conclude, uh, let, me, let me give you one or two issues. Let me see. So uh, on, in COVID, particularly when you look into the COVID, if you look into this, and I agree with Professor Raman Suban also, the Asian, uh, the, this century is an Asian century. And we should recognize this from the heart, that this is an Asian century. Asian countries should understand this. And that should be the priority. There will be, and with the new Cold War between China and America, there will be diversion. There will be strategic game planning between countries. But we should understand that this is a century which has given the back the opportunity that we had in the 18th, 17th century. 17th century was an Asian century. Now this is a new century and 17th century we lost because of colonization. So we should be careful about it. This is another century, the new opportunity, but this opportunity, if you want to take advantage of this opportunity, we should look into the strategic partnership between Bangladesh and other countries through, with, including China, as a bigger trading and investment partner. So I would conclude by saying that, yes, there are flags that you have mentioned that Dr. Pamida has mentioned. At the same time, uh, we should continue on those, uh, at giving look at the strategic game plan that is happening and say, look, we can play this. Bangladesh is not a small country. If you look carefully, the GDP of Bangladesh is as big as Malaysian GDP. So if you look into the economy size of Bangladesh, this is very big. And the potential of growth exists in Bangladesh. So given this, I would say we should look into these aspects and develop our partnership. I will stop here for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Inamul Haq. Uh, now, uh, I think we have uh, Ambassador Humayun Kubil who has just joined. Uh, he is the president of Bangladesh Enterprise Institute. Uh, and uh, he, he is um, uh, from the uh, government, a former uh, government official, and also very deep understanding on the international relations issues. So my specific uh, query from Ambassador um, Kabir would be that what strategic importance does Bangladesh hold in attract, attracting uh, investment from China? And also the economic relations relationship, can it be improved without addressing the existing geopolitical issues? And the other issue also uh, I would like to uh, like you to focus on is that do you see any uh, tensions with regard to Bangladesh's stance in balancing China and India with regard to bilateral cooperation because both are Bangladesh's big neighbors and Bangladesh has uh, economic relationship and wants to uh, continue uh, economic relationship in, in the days to come. So these are uh, specific issues posed to you, but you also like to reflect uh, whatever you feel. Ambassador Humayun Kabir. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, good morning to all of you. And uh, 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 first of all, I should thank CPD for hosting such an important, uh, I would say, uh, a dialogue. Mm, and it's very timely, uh, and I'm really grateful that you have uh, included me uh, as a discussion on this uh, uh, dialogue. Uh, with regard to the question that uh, Dr. Farmida you have mentioned, uh, Bangladesh uh, in its own merit uh, demands 
uh, an attractive investment destination. It's a, uh, I would say, reasonably big market, uh, growing economy. Um, is also getting connected uh, uh, to the regional, I would say, uh, countries. Although, uh, I would say, in view of the uh, new emerging economic groupings that are coming up, Bangladesh is still, uh, still not very much connected to them. Uh, but I think as, as a country, Bangladesh uh, uh, is, is, is reasonably attractive, uh, at, uh, at, uh, reasonably attractive country uh, to invest. Now, with regard to uh, the interest of China, uh, I think Chinese interest we have seen uh, on two tracks. One is the bilateral track, uh, building economic relationship and um, taking advantage of the opportunities that are coming up. And here, uh, I would say uh, that at the political level, uh, at the economic level, uh, Bangladesh and China has been uh, uh, benefiting from the economic cooperation uh, that has been going on for decades now. Uh, but now that Bangladesh is growing and Bangladesh is now also expanding its economic horizon beyond only its land, for example, the blue economy area, uh, I think here uh, China uh, could become a potential investor. Uh, now the question is: This is the this is a bilateral track, but China also explored. Um, uh, uh, I think Professor Raman Soban is here. He has been working since long time back on developing the sub-regional or regional collaboration uh, framework under Kunmin Dialogue and subsequently BCIM. Uh, but that track now looks little, I would say, uh, in a difficulty. Uh, so as of now, in my view, the Bangladesh-China um, uh, economic or China relationship on the economic field essentially remains uh, bilateral and looks like that it might continue uh, on bilateral track for quite some time. Uh, now, the question that you have uh, raised at, at the second part of your, uh, 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 you know, uh, of your uh, uh, you know, initial remarks, is that, is it trouble-free? I mean, is it like as it was before? Uh, unfortunately, we are seeing that even with the bilateral track, we are seeing some, mm, some I would say, uh, intervention or interference, if I may put it, from other interested parties. I would just give an example uh, with the Dhaka Stock Exchange. I mean, uh, recently we have seen that. So we saw China-India competition uh, on this issue. And even on the major infrastructure projects that are coming up, where Bangladesh and uh, China are working bilaterally, those are being discussed now. We have not seen that before. Uh, for example, Silet Airport Extension, Chinese uh, interest in Tista, uh, basin management uh, project. Uh, so these are the issues where I think now we are seeing the geopolitical content is getting mixed up. So what was purely a, a bilateral issue has now become linked up with the political issue or geopolitical issue. And I'm seeing more difficulty ahead, ahead as we move from the land to the maritime area, for example, the, uh, the new area, new domain or new economic opportunity that we are talking about will definitely come from the, uh, from the blue economy. Now, blue economy, once we go and start exploring that, I'm anticipating now a lot of difficulties uh, for a number of reasons. For example, uh, the tension, ongoing tension between India and China and they have now taken an almost mutually exclusive position vis-a-vis uh, -vis each other. And also they are trying to influence other countries in the region to take their side. Look at what happened now uh, with regard to Indo-US bilateral relationship. And then the kind of agreements they have signed, 
that have not only regional but global implications. And then visit of uh, Pompeo, uh, the foreign, uh, the Secretary of State, to uh, uh, to Sri Lanka and Maldives. And there also he raised the issue of Chinese uh, interest or Chinese economic activities. Now, I would not be surprised if they have uh, the or the Americans can talk about that. The same thing can happen with us. I mean, they are, they might look at or scrutinize the Chinese. Uh, 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 projects in Bangladesh, and I can give you one example. Yesterday, I was uh, reading, and I really uh, got a bad feeling because if this kind of situations develop further, then it will be really a, a put a big challenge for us. Uh, Singaporean diplomat, the permanent former permanent secretary, Mr. Bilahari, he has recently mentioned that Cambodia should be pushed out of ASEAN. Yeah, for being too close to China. And the point he's now making is that, that Cambodia has lost its independent decision-making process. And the two, they are too close to China. And now ASEAN may consider pushing Cambodia out of ASEAN. I mean, this is something very serious issue being discussed. Cambodia has reacted in its own way. But the fact is that this issue is being discussed gives a foreshadow of how things could evolve. Yeah, I understand Cambodia has difficulty internally and they are under, I mean, kind of a mm, lot of scrutiny from the EU and so on and so forth. Now, if this is the trend that are developing in the future and we are now sitting in the middle of India, China, ASEAN uh, scenario. And here the Americans are also, Americans, uh, are also a big party. So that means that if we look at the future, a lot of challenges we can anticipate now because our developmental needs will demand investment from outside. The West doesn't have the investment. I mean, the Americans are not interested in kind of capital investment that we are interested in, such as infrastructure and other stuff, even maybe also in the Bay of Bengal, for example, for, for blue economy. So who would be, invest, uh, who'd be investing here? China is a potential investor. Now, these economic investment would now be clouded possibly by geopolitical consideration. And that, that is a potential difficulty that I can anticipate. Now the question is, can we overcome them? Well, perhaps, and here a very sophisticated nuanced diplomacy we have to conduct. Now, anything else can, uh, that Bangladesh can do? Well, my sense, I'm sharing my personal view. Perhaps we can, where we can. When I look at the Chinese uh, economic uh, kind of support to other countries, or Indian support to other countries, or Saudi Arabia support to other countries, we can see that each one of them follows their own standards. They, have, they don't have any, any kind of common template or any standard. And that is one of the points that the West, for example, the Americans, Europeans are now raising, that they, they try to exploit uh, the recipient countries and creates the possibility of them falling into debt trap. Now, how, how do we handle that situation? Perhaps we could look at, we could encourage our partners, such as China, for example, to develop or to join or help a template which is acceptable globally, for example. OECD has a template on investment and other areas. So World Bank has a template. So China and India, both, we can suggest to them that if you develop a kind of acceptable template, uh, which is globally acceptable or aligned with the global standard, then it could be helpful to us to, to sell the idea or to borrow from you. And at the same time, for you also, it would be better to sell your uh, or extend your economic support without creating a kind of reaction uh, that you are uh, putting or pushing the countries into the debt trap. So 
perhaps it is time that we, we need support from China. China has the capacity to extend support, but now what would be the framework for that? And there perhaps uh, countries like us, it is not only Bangladesh, we can work with some of the countries in the region, uh, perhaps uh, beyond the region to help come out of the situation. And one of them, um, as I see, geopolitical tension will remain but if we can create a situation where uh, we can show that we are maintaining a standard or aligned with the global standard of investment uh, rates, repayment, and so on and so forth, that could perhaps clean the slate a little bit. And then okay. um, people yeah. coming and, and raising the question could Thank be Thank you, Ambassador avoided. Kabir, yes. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, Ambassador Kubira. I think you have raised a number of pertinent issues, particularly your suggestion on the development of, a, uh, of an independent template, which is aligned to the global standard. This is something very important. And I think uh, uh, the South, Southern uh, donors and Southern investors have to now you know, come forward to develop this, which is acceptable, and which will be above the question of issues like dead trap and all these um, so that the countries can take their decisions independently. And we can, how your suggestion also uh, on, uh, on the issue of debt trap, avoiding the debt trap issues. These are very important issues and which are being discussed for a long time. Uh, now, I think uh, I will move to uh, some of our Chinese colleagues. Uh, we have two distinguished panelists from China. Uh, first, I would like to request Professor Chen, Cheng Min, uh, she is a professor at the Institute for Bangladesh Studies at Yunnan Academy of Social Sciences, Kunming, China. So, Professor Chengming, I think you visited last time also to Bangladesh to attend one of our seminars, and she, is, uh, she deals with South Asian issues. So, um, Professor Chengming, uh, thank you very much for joining, and you have five minutes. If you can make your comments, please, over to you. Okay, thank you very much to CPD for holding such a virtual dialogue on the 45th anniversary of establishment of diplomatic relations between China and Bangladesh. When the COVID-19 first broke out Hi, in, China in January this year. Bolo, bolo, I'm meeting you. Yes, carry on. And uh, <laughs> if, if if all of you can keep your microphone muted, then the speaker can speak uninterruptedly. Thank you. Please go ahead. Uh, yes. Uh, when the COVID-19 first broke out in China in January this year, Bangladesh, which had no cases at that time, expressed the deep concern over the outbreak and donated a large amount of epidemic prevention materials to China. I read an article by William Roman, former Secretary of Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Bangladesh and Chairman of the Heritage Foundation of Bangladesh, who argues that Bangladesh should stand by the Chinese people. China will eventually overcome the virus and the Western countries' overreaction to the coronavirus more dangerous than the virus itself. All this moved us very much. Thank you. China has basically re restored normal social order. We also wish Bangladesh an earlier victory over the virus. Here, I would like to share with you my views on the following issues raised by Formida. First issue. What has been the trend of Chinese investment in Bangladesh? Which are the sectors that receive more investment for Ch from China? Is there any common pattern in terms of sectoral focus? I think Bangladesh has the following investment advantages. First, sustained economic growth. In 2018 to 2019 fiscal year, the real economic growth rate of Bangladesh reached 8.15%, and Bangladesh became one of the 40th growing regions in the world. 
in fiscal year 2019 to 2020. Despite the impact of COVID-19, Bangladesh's economic growth rate reached 5.24%. Second, the domestic political situation is increasingly stable. Third, there are many preferential policies for foreign direct investment. Fourth, it has a large number of cheap labor and strong market base. And fifth, superior geographical location. In recent years, China's direct investment in Bangladesh has been growing rapidly. It grew, it grew from $5.31 million in 2006 to $544 million in 2018. The main areas of Chinese investment in Bangladesh are electricity, textiles, commerce and trade, and leathers. There is also great scope for cooperation in the information industry, joint efforts to reduce poverty and tackle climate change. And the second is some argue that Chinese investment through BRI will benefit only the Chinese economy and the gains for the small countries will be negligible. What has been the experience so far? How can BRI be a win-win proposition that reduce poverty and promote trade, investment in, and economic well-being of all participating countries? I think for many developing countries, improving people's living style is the most important thing. BRI means that it offers development opportunities to most countries. Let's look at two cases. The first case, the first highway in East Africa through a partnership called One Bed One Road. The highway was built in it's OPIA and is based entirely on, on Chinese technology and standards. In the second case, with the help of China, Belarus for the first time had its own car manufacturing industry. There are many more examples and I won't go through them all. BRI follows the principle of wide consultation, joint contribution, shared benefits, which is driven by market mechanism fundamentally and uh, entrepreneurs make their own judgment based on costs and benefits. So it's a win-win situation. I believe that China's pragmatic, pragmatic actions bring more benefits to local people than the empty talk and accusation. I would also like to say a few words about the death trap. China's laws are very different from other laws. Most of the laws of China are used for the construction of the real economy, and they actually create a lot of high quality assets, which have appreciated in value or will appreciate in value in the future. That's all, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor uh, Cheng Min, for your uh, remarks. Now we have uh, another, uh, another speaker from China, Dr. Wang Shida, who is the Deputy Director at China Academy of Contemporary International Relations, uh, Institute of South Asian Studies in Beijing, China. So Dr. Wang Shida, so please, uh, yes, please make your remarks within five minutes. Thanks, Chair. First, I would like to say that uh, thank the Lord for CPT to arrange this kind of very important seminar and uh, give me the opportunity to meet friends, old friends and new friends uh, in Bangladesh. Uh, in fact, uh, I, may, I met uh, Mr. Soban Singh uh, three or four years ago in Bangladesh in CPT, a long time, and also my old friends 
uh, Ambassador Sabir from BER. So, hello. Uh, I would like to uh, use the opportunity to share my humble opinion on the uh, bilateral cooperation between China and Bangladesh in the past 45 years, including develop development cooperation. First is the political, um, because I think the political, when we talk about cooperation, even economic or development cooperation, the political issue is always prior priority because without the mutual uh, uh, trust, I think it, it is very difficult to, to, to let other areas cooperation go a very high level. So the political answer is that I should say that this year marks the 45th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relationship between China and Bangladesh. And uh, like President Xi Jinping pointed out that since the establishment of the, our bilateral dipl diplomatic relations 45 years ago, the two countries have always respected and treated each other as equals and always strengthened the political mutual trust, deepened the mutually beneficial cooperation and brought tangible benefit to the peoples. And uh, also since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, China and Bangladesh have worked together and helped each other to fight this kind of uh, pandemic side by side, which also I think write a new chapter in our bilateral friendship. President Xi also attached great importance to the development of our bilateral relations and you're willing to work with President as well as uh, Prime Minister uh, Hasina to strengthen the strategic connection between the two countries and push our strategic cooperative partnership to a new height. While uh, on the other hand, uh, Prime Minister Hasina uh, has visited China many times as Prime Minister as well as leader of the opposition party. They also, uh, she also attached great importance to the historical heritage of the China and the Bangladesh relationships. Uh, I should say that the close contact between the leaders of the two countries have contributed to the promotion of the two countries. The friendship between the people of the country plays a huge role. And also, uh, uh, Prime Minister Hassan emphasized that the Bangladesh developed the bilateral relationship with China on the basis of the five principles of peaceful coexistence. coexistence. Respect and support the development path chosen by each country based on their own national interest. I think that is very important because it is a political precondition. Uh, second, I would like to say a few words about economic, that is the development cooperation. I think uh, the economic and trade relationship, relationships, relationships between China and Bangladesh have developed very, very rapidly since the establishment of the diplomatic relationship in 19. 75. The so economic and trade of the both countries uh, are highly complementary. On the one hand, Bangladesh has good deep sea ports, while uh, the rich natural gas resources and a population of 170 million, low labor cost, and a huge consumer market. On the other hand, China has its own advantages, which makes the economy of China and Bangladesh very complementary to each other. And uh, also, uh, Prime Minister Hassan stated that China is one of Bangladesh's most important partners in economic cooperation. China's cooperation in the fields of infrastructure, construction, trade, investment, energy and power, information and communication technology, telecommunication as, as well as agriculture, all have, uh, have a very positive impact on Bangladesh's social and economic pro progress. Uh, third is the security. I think China and Bangladesh have, have neither historical grievances nor the current geopolitical conflict of interest. Uh, in a word, I think there is not a historical problem of the current uh, interest conflict between China and Bangladesh, which paves the way for the security cooperation between China and Bangladesh. I think both countries are very comfortable in developing security cooperations. Up till now, I think uh, a huge amount of part of the main battle equipment of the Bangladesh, uh, including army, navy, and air forces come from China, while the military personnel exchange all going very frequently. Last but not least, that is the BNR. Uh, in my uh, humble opinion, the construction of the BNR initiative has become a, a new, a new driving force for the China-Bangladesh cooperation. Uh, you see, when, in 2013, when Chinese president first put forward the BNR in initiative, uh, uh, I think it warmly welcomed by the Bangladesh. For example, when meeting with President Xi in 2019, Prime Minister Hasina said that Bangladesh is looking forward to receiving support and cooperation 
from China while struggling to realize the golden Bengal dream proposed by the founding father of uh, the Bangladesh, such as enhanced bilateral trade and investment, deepened cooperation in infrastructure con construction, digital economy, climate change, counterterrorism, and security. Uh, Bangladesh will still and we is willing to benefit, benefit from China's experience in governance as well as uh, other uh, experience and actively participate in the joint construction of the BNR initiative. Just now, I think uh, uh, Ambassador Kabir mentioned the BCRM project and totally agree with you that up to now, I think BCRM may face a, a little problems, some issue, but I think the corporations be, uh, among China, Bengal, Bangladesh, as well as other regional countries should continue. For example, maybe a sub regional cooperation, including both China and Bangladesh. Last but not least, I would like to give a, a, a very simple response to one of the questions that uh, uh, Mr. Chairman just mentioned. That is, uh, BNR's benefit who? I should say that uh, at first, uh, when we talk about the BNR, the uh, Chinese side always adhere to the principle of we consult together, we build together, and we uh, enjoy together. I would like to take uh, uh, another project as example. For example, the CPEC, uh, which is a China-Pakistan economic corridor. You see that uh, after seven years of construction, uh, I think up to now, the, the Pakistan already break out the neck, the, 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 the neck bottles for their economic and social development. Because in, in 2013, Pakistan is uh, in deadly need of the power as well as other is infrastructure. But up till now, I think the power supply of Pakistan is not, no longer a problem. While in the meantime, the road, the railways, the port, as well as other special economic zones are, are all going uh, 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 step by step. So that uh, I think that really lays a solid foundation uh, for the future economic kickoff as well as industrialization of Pakistan. So that when we talk about this so-called so -called debt, uh, debt trap, as well as other issues, I think we should uh, keep in mind. So uh, who invest, who real invest, and who, uh, how many investments that the country did. China do not like the, the so-called empty talks. China invest a lot of uh, resources in regional countries, while I think some other countries just uh, just accuse China, while that we should see that how much money, how much resources, how much techniques that this such kind of country they invest in neighboring countries. Thanks a lot, I would like to conclude here, thanks. Thank you very much, Dr. Wang Shida. We have heard from uh, two Chinese experts. Uh, their views, particularly uh, Dr. Wang Shida has mentioned about the complementarity of the two economies, and you have also brought out the issue of security cooperation. We'll hear more about the security aspects from one of our panelists, uh, General Munir Zaman. But now I would like to request Mr. Mahbub Ur Rahman, who is the Chief Executive Officer at the Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation Limited, Bangladesh. And um, uh, he is the private sector representative here today. And um, HSBC Bank has been involved in uh, trade a lot, particularly ready-made garments trade. And my specific question to Mabu would be that, uh, that after, the, uh, after a number of MOU signed by President Xi Jinping during his visit to Bangladesh, uh, how much private investment has come so far B2B, and what are the challenges uh, in, with regard to private investment, and what strategic investments are being made under the B BRI Belt and Road Initiative, and also the uh, issue of market access. Now that 97% of uh, uh, market access uh, of Bangladesh's products uh, would be given to the Chinese market. So uh, how will the Bangladeshi exporters uh, be benefited from that? Because since HSBC Bank is you know, involved in um, exports uh, significantly. So Mabu, over to you. So thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Appa and uh, chief guests, excellencies, distinguished panelists, uh, and all the attendees. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I'll just, uh, for the interest of the time, I'll actually highlight the forward-looking perspective and also define uh, the three major aspects that we observe 
uh, in uh, what is being taking place in, in Bangladesh. Uh, if I just categorize the three aspects of it is domestic demand. Of course, uh, domestic demand is growing 170 million people, 50% uh, below 25, GDP is growing, uh, uh, and also uh, remittances also um, uh, keep, keep, keep on increasing. The second part is the infrastructure uh, developments. Uh, of course, when you have 170 million people in 55,000 square mile, of course, the infrastructure has to happen on the physical infrastructure. But what, what we have also uh, understood during this pandemic, that the service infrastructure is also something that people are now uh, reflecting, um, which is, of course, healthcare, uh, ICT, uh, and of course, the education aspects of it. So that's the infrastructure. And the third uh, aspects of Bangladesh should be supply chain reconfiguration. So uh, keeping uh, Honorable Chairman's um, advice of uh, the macro and the strategic viewpoints, what I would start with is that uh, on the domestic demand, of course, China has been the major trading partner and to the import side, and that is also contributing to the domestic demand as well as the industrial raw materials. Now, um, if I see the current developments of um, what's happening on the, on the uh, you know, China side, being the export destination of Asia vis-a-vis uh, -vis the other countries. Next month, there is an expo happening in, in China, which is called China International Import e Expo. That means that China is very willing to realize that what the other nation has to offer and the showcase uh, for them to buy. So it is not about the China Expo, meaning China exporting out, it's rather uh, what is China importing and how uh, the countries as well as the, as the farms and, and to the chairman's point that, you know, how do we identify some of the uh, sector players for the synergy and mutual interest? So from a made in China and made in Bangladesh to the made for China, that is the trend that uh, has to capture. And, and, and to your point, that some of the tariff flexibility, whether it's bilateral, whether it's regional, and whether it's anything preferential trade agreement has to take place to seize the market. Because while uh, the import and the, the point about the trade uh, deficit is there, but for the right reasons, uh, that export has to happen. And I think that has to be mutually uh, beneficial. So that is one aspect of this, okay, uh, made in Bangladesh, made for China. Made in China concept was there, but today the concept of made for China has to come in. The other aspects about the infrastructure, uh, the service infrastructure, I think we talked about the healthcare. I have personally visited one of the companies in Shenzhen. I have seen the medical equipments being manufactured on a world-class basis. So how do we really uh, having an collaboration that not only the software side, but also the hardware of the medical equipments at this moment, how can we actually foster that collaboration for them to uh, help and for us to take advantage of that service infrastructure? On the ICT, we already know that and financials and Alibaba has got a stake in, um, in, in, Ali, in, in Bikash, but I think that's probably as a reactive measures, but from an overall uh, potential of Bangladesh in the ICT areas, I think WeChat and many other areas that we can take advantage of and take uh, a very proactive approach to collaborate with, with, with China. The lastly, the supply chain reconfiguration. I think, of course, uh, my previous point about having to uh, foster the made for China, but I think the, uh, the establishment of a supply chain is already there with Bangladesh, especially in the apparel sector. Now, from that perspective, what we see that at this moment, Bangladesh's man-made fiber is going to be the key challenge for the front-end operations of Bangladesh, that where the verticality of uh, supply chain, uh, particularly the backward linkage operation of the garments and textile uh, is going to be, uh, I would say, a bit challenging from a man-made fiber because the fashion is getting different. And at this moment, our backward linkage operation is mostly cotton-based. So from a sector expertise, uh, I think there is a 
there is a very, very wider opportunity exist for us to really identify that how the capital investments are going to happen, say for like synthetics and the man-made fiber from China to Bangladesh, only to take advantage of the front end where we are actually making um, uh, the garments for, for the world. And that can also happen uh, other way around. Man, you know, the, the, where the international brands are growing, they're growing in Asia, they're growing in, in, in China. So it is not only for the Chinese brands, but also for the international brands operating in China. I think the trend has started. So my previous point about having to collaborate with supply chain, especially where the capital intensive projects are required to supply to this wider uh, garments and textile industry, the raw materials that we don't have at this moment in Bangladesh, but they can come and then take uh, and, 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 and make an investment for a captive usage by the garments and textile industry so that that becomes quite unique or win-win uh, for this Bangladesh to take advantage of uh, the growing uh, requirements of the apparels, which are not necessarily cotton-based. Just to give an example that the man-made fiber export from Bangladesh out of the total export is 25%, while Vietnam uh, makes almost 50% of the synthetic products to the outside of, the, of, of, of Vietnam. So that's probably one of the areas. Now um, on the, and I will, I'll just end within, within the next two minutes, uh, that while we see the trade is going to be a little more balanced than what it is today, I see the opportunity to take advantage of, or at least to see strategic pointers to see the RMB as a trading currency. Because if we keep on importing uh, from China, which is the fact at this moment, and if the trend of export to China starts to happen a bit more faster than what it is today, I see that both the export and import can happen within RMB. We, as a, as a bank, uh, we have been voted lately the, the best RMB bank in Bangladesh. So from that experience, I can see that strategically from a policymaking uh, authorities, as well as uh, from the ministries, I think this is one area that we can explore uh, to have our trading currency a bit more diversified than what it is today. Uh, so uh, yes, the three major areas, domestic demand, infrastructure, and supply chain reconfiguration. I think in both the three areas, uh, all the three areas, our experience with China has already been there. Uh, the confidence has already been there. We just need to narrow down a few areas where the identified private operators, as well as the government operators can find an, 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 an uh, niche and also can foster from a um, policy perspective to see the next three to five years that how it's going to operate uh, for the collaboration as well as for the mutual benefit of the trade and investments both. Just to have your specific questions about the, uh, the MOU that has been signed during President uh, Xi's visit. Uh, this, uh, what I would say is that out of the, all the projects already 30 to 40% are actually in progress. So I will not quantify that one, but I think almost 30% from a value perspective is in, in progress. So I think I see that good traction is happening. And we HSBC also have a China desk uh, where uh, the two of our staff members are dedicated for uh, having to cater to the China inbound in Bangladesh. That from a service side, that the talent developments are also happening in collaboration with the uh, with the Chinese counterpart. So I will stop there, and I'm gonna probably any questions during the open sessions would be happy to respond. So of course, uh, the thematics of made for China, uh, uh, our experience with working even. With points 
so I'm sure during the open floor discussion, there will be comments. After one more speaker, we'll open the floor for discussion. So during which uh, the audience can make any comments or pose any question to any of the panelists. So we have uh, from this uh, section segment, we have more speakers, but uh, from this first segment, we have the last speaker. Um, this is Major General A.N.M. Munir Zaman, NDC PSC, retired president, Bangladesh Institute of Peace and Security Studies. He is an expert on security issues, uh, on international relations, and of course, uh, you know, political issues and geopolitical issues. So I would like to request uh, General Munir Zaman to highlight some of the issues which I had posed to Ambassador uh, uh, Ambassador Humayun could be earlier, but it, in addition to that, I would also like to, you know, ask you to focus on the Sino-Bangladesh investment regime, which will be uh, underpinned by the trends in the global uh, the political uh, and economic relationship, particularly uh, between China and the USA. So, uh, and apart from the other issues which I have earlier uh, earlier posed to Ambassador Humayun Kabir. Over to you, General Munisaman. Thank you, Dr. Framida. Let me start by thanking CPD for the very kind invitation to be on the panel. Uh, talking about some of the key issues today between China and Bangladesh on economic cooperation. I would like to start by saying that the economic cooperation between Bangladesh and China has a natural synergy and we have historical background if we just look back to the pre-colonial days, not too long ago, this part of South Asia and China together contributed to 54% of the global GDP, which was lost due to the years of history of colonial rule in this part of the world. And that is something that both our countries would like to reclaim again. China today is Bangladesh's largest trading partner with $18.7 billion USD, two-way trade, bilateral trade. It is also our strategic partner. We have excellent people-to-people -people relationship. China is also our biggest military hardware provider. So we have multiple channels of cooperation with China. Why should China be interested in Bangladesh compared to other nations in this part of the world? The reasons that I see is that Bangladesh provides an excellent convergence of Chinese geostrategic and geoeconomic interest in this part of the world. Bangladesh is also a key maritime nation sitting on the mouth of the Bay of Bengal, which becomes a very vital space for all sorts of maritime trade, particularly in the Indian Ocean region or IOR. We are also a key partner in the BCIM corridor. And as you know, the BCIM corridor is also becoming a BRI corridor. Of the six BRI corridor, there are only two maritime corridors. And the BCIM corridor is one of those key maritime corridor. So therefore, Bangladesh also provides a critical maritime space and also a corridor to that space. So it is extremely attractive to Chinese investment for that reason. I would also like to say that we are also a country that provides deep sea port facilities and we are in the process of constructing a deep sea port at Paira. And I'm happy to note that China is also taking part in the construction of that port. So therefore on the overall connectivity, regional connectivity, both on land and on maritime space, China would find Bangladesh extremely attractive. I would also like to say that we have a country that is in close proximity to the Rakhine state of Myanmar, in which China has deep strategic, economic, and other interests. Therefore, Bangladesh being a neighbor has also a country that provides that kind of stability into that region. Therefore, the issue of the settlement of the Rohingya refugee crisis also becomes very important. Of course, our speakers have pointed out that we provide a large labor pool, but we also provide an alternative tariff path to Chinese industries 
who are increasingly coming under various tariff restrictions, particularly from the United States and Western markets. So therefore, a relocation of Chinese industries to Bangladesh is in the interest of Chinese industries as well as Bangladesh. But the other issues that I would like to flag very briefly is that the shadow of the current Sino-Indian relation is also overcasting on Bangladesh. We all know that the Chinese and the Indians are at a point of standoff in the Ladakh region, and that has a negative shadow on all relations within South Asia, particularly because India is also our very large neighbor and a neighbor that shares border on three sides. It has also deep connections to Bangladesh, both on economy and political spheres. Therefore, Sino-Indian tensions and potential conflict can have a very deep negative shadow on all sorts of economic cooperation within the region, including Bangladesh's economic cooperation with China. But a bigger question that comes to my mind now is the growing tension between the United States and China. And that is going to reshape much of the global landscape of strategic relationship. I see that there is a chance of a new Cold War 2.0. And if that comes about, then all countries, including countries like Bangladesh, which could be categorized as small states and middle power states, can have to re-navigate its pathways again as we shape our bilateral and multilateral relationship with countries, including our relationship with China, which we would like to maintain at all cost, because China is not only our friend, China is our strategic partner, both on strategic issues and economic issues. But the strategic competition that is starting between the United States and China may force Bangladesh to choose a side, and that is something we must avoid at all cost. We must maintain equidistance from both our friends, China, and other countries in the West. It is in our interest, it is in our national interest, that we must maintain strategic autonomy at all cost. Maintenance of strategic autonomy is fundamental to maintain economic competitiveness and economic freedom. So therefore, we have to be extremely cautious in re-navigating the new complex world that we are entering. I would also like to say that with the potential decoupling of the US and the Chinese economies, which are the world's two largest economies, a lot of su supply chain management issues have to be reconfigured. And in that reconfiguration, we must charter our ways so that we take the best advantage of this new world economy, which is in the process of decoupling. We are also seeing a new tech war starting between the United States and the West in one side and China on the other. So therefore that is a an space in which we have to trade very carefully again, because we would like to have new technology, 5G telephone technology and others. I see that there is a great move by the United States again to reinvigorate its strategy of Indo-Pacific strategy or IPS. And we have seen the recent visits of very high level US diplomats to the region, which has now become a principal destination for many of these political and diplomatic players in the world. So Bangladesh is a part of IPS in, in principle, but we are also a signatory to PRI. We should be very careful in maintaining our status in both so that we take the best advantage of both these initiatives to our national interest and don't become a part of any military agreements or soft military agreements, especially in the face of the recent military agreements that have been signed between the United States and India last week. We have to charter our course very carefully. In the last one minute and a half, I would like to also suggest that we must graduate beyond the traditional economic cooperation that we have with China, which is traditionally in the field of infrastructure development and some low tech industries in Bangladesh investments. The areas that I would like to suggest 
we must co find out cooperation with China to bring in more startup incubators in which China is excellent today. China has excellent startup initiatives. That is a skill we need to acquire from them. We also need to talk to China in finding out how best it can lead in the green economic development that it is leading in its own country. Green economy is the future of the world economy. And that is where China can give us the skill, the investment, and the knowledge and know-how so that we can also become a major player in the future green economy. The world today is entering a possible post-COVID world with complete new paradigm shifts, not only in strategy, but also in its global economy. So therefore, we have to find out exactly how the new shape of the global economy and cooperation is going to look like. And we have to find our position there and reposition ourselves in that economy. I would like to suggest that China also develops not only regional cooperation in this part of the world, but also talks about sub-regional cooperation. I would like to suggest that China should provide Bangladesh its skill and know-how in tech economy, particularly in high-tech sector like 5G, AI, robotics, big data, etc. We were both present in the second BRI summit in Beijing last year. The chairman CPD and I were present in the excellent speeches that were given by world leaders. And a key takeaway from there was that we not only must develop economic corridors, but we must develop thought corridors. And as a think tanker, we were present in the think tank network of BRI in which both CPD and my, my institutions are members. And that's an area where we should develop more skills and knowledge and know-how. I would also suggest that China should also do some homework in polishing up its investment image internationally because a number of unproven uh, profiles have been attached to its name and it's needs to clear up because that is essential to develop investment climate in other countries. I would suggest that China should also be a major player in Bangladesh in FinTech, which is again the future of economy. And I'm happy to see that it has some limited investment in Bikash and the stock exchange, but it should come in in more major way as we try to develop our e-commerce capacity in Bangladesh. I would also suggest that China should become a major player in providing and developing our blue economic capacity in which I am also cautioning that there will be major resistance for other international players because the IOR is becoming an area of contention and strategic competition. I would also like to say that there should be new digital corridors between China and Bangladesh. Again, something that President Xi mentioned during his speech to the second BRI summit. We need to have Chinese cooperation better in developing our negotiation skills in which we still lack our capacity. So therefore we cannot put the blame on any other country when we cannot negotiate better. An area where I would like to lay a lot of emphasis is that China has now today developed excellent capacity in smart agriculture. And that is an area where we can get their support. I have personally gone and seen their capacity in the field and they have extremely high capacity in smart agriculture, something that we should bring for improving our agricultural production and capacity. We need to have also Chinese support in building smart cities in Bangladesh because a very overpopulated country like Bangladesh cannot survive without developing smart cities in which China has a lot of capacity. I'm happy to see that there has been some talk about water management and basin management and Pista water support. And those are the areas where we should cooperate more with China in finding out more avenues for water management and river basin management. Of course, software is a field where China has been cooperative with Bangladesh. We perhaps need to expand that and a new area where I would suggest that we must now also find out ways where we can have joint collaboration on the entertainment industry between Bangladesh 
and China, which is a very, very rapidly expanding international film. So with those very brief statements, I would like to end here, and we can come back again during the Q&A session. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, General Munizaman. You have uh, highlighted a number of issues and your points regarding maintaining strategic autonomy for economic autonomy and uh, a number of suggestions where uh, China can extend its support are very important. Indeed, all the speakers have highlighted a number of issues which are uh, beneficial for both the countries if we want to strengthen the economic cooperation. I wouldn't uh, summarize anything because uh, we are running behind a lot and also the, the rich discussion is beyond my capacity to you know, bring all those points in a few minutes. Uh, so uh, the Honorable Minister has to leave uh, very soon, but I would like to now open the floor. I'll take you know, to one or two comments and then I'll go to the Honorable Minister. From the audience, I see a lot of people, a lot of important uh, you know, participants are there, both from uh, across, the, I think, Bangladesh and beyond, I can see. So if anyone wants to you know, make a point, uh, just within one minute, uh, many, any comments or any questions you, if you have to the audience, you can do so right now. Yes. So. Um, yes, Leslie, Leslie Wong. Yes, I can see. Uh, yes, please raise your hand, whoever wants to come. I'll also call some. Leslie, please come forward. Yes, thank you, Famira. Thank you, everyone. And I'm very honored to be invited and as a guest to join this uh, uh, forum. It is very important for both countries. And actually, just a little bit of background about myself. I, I was born in Shanghai, so I'm Chinese, and I married a Bangladesh uh, person, Javed Rahman. So actually I represent, I consider myself, uh, both country are my home native countries. So I have a special attachment to Bangladesh. And this topic is extremely important for us personally and professionally. And a little bit of background. So um, we actually met in New York and we used to work in uh, Wall Street. So I used to work for Goldman Sachs Morgan Stanley, other major investment firms. So for the past few years, I'm actually one of the active uh, supporters and advocates for the Bangladesh and uh, Chinese uh, economic ties. So I explore that. Now, currently uh, we run something very important and I think very meaningful for all. So we have a online um, education platform based in Hong Kong. It's called mommydaddyme.com. So we are the, um, actually one of now, we consider ourselves a fast growing online um, um, learning platform for K-12 uh, in terms of giving the world-class material and resources for our children. Uh, we are a proud partner with uh, uh, South China Morning Post. Some of you may know, so they belong to Alibaba Group. They're Hong Kong and this region is the largest newspaper. We actually have a joint platform to offer the world-class um, learning uh, contents and services, including Scholastic. So Scholastic is the publisher for uh, Harry Potter and the US largest 100 year old history um, uh, education uh, publisher. So we're very proud to bring reading materials, coding resources, language, so including English and Chinese uh, language uh, training for our children. And I think this is uh, if, and in Bangladesh, we actually also have a Bangladesh company. So we're in the middle of uh, further expand, expanding to bring really whether the, uh, the advanced uh, uh, learning technology. So we consider ourselves an edutech company. We also consider us uh, a curator and a provider for world-class materials, uh, bring from US, from China, and, and, and the, uh, the uh, classroom, live classroom um, standard. And then something run very well to Bangladesh. We are in the middle of uh, soon implementing uh, some very large telecom institution partners. So hopefully you will see us more in Bangladesh. And our goal is to really um, break, uh, bring down the border, make the education borderless, and particularly in the current pandemic situation uh, where we see the, uh, the new norm of the uh, learning where uh, our internet has enabled the scalable learning and enable the equitable access for the education uh, possible. So we are the one now uh, making our way, hopefully get your support. And I'm very glad to share my thoughts. Thank, Thank you very much. For this thank you. Thank you, uh, Leslie. Uh, this is another example of 
private uh, you know collaboration by private cooperation um so i will take another comment very quickly uh, because i have to give the floor to the honorable minister because he has an appointment at 1 p.m. 1 p.m. sharp so uh, if anyone can make it in 1 minute please uh, do so otherwise we will can i you dr famida dr dev has yes. famida I see a number of yes. Yes, I have seen uh, Dr. Devupu Bhattacharya has raised his uh, hands and Mustafiz Bhai also. But uh, yes, please decide between the two. So who will come first? No, let let the uh, speak. No, no, no. Mustafiz goes ahead. He's a bigger no. Chinese expert than I am. No. <laughs> please, Devupu, oh. please, please. Oh, thank you. No, I, I my general point is. Uh, what do we take for ourselves, for Bangladesh, from this discussion? What is the policy uh, message what we take forward in order to improve uh, investment and also to seek market and develop infrastructure and improve human resources? So I see at this moment when we are preparing our new industrial policy, which is possibly underway, what type of new strategic approach we can build in over there from the perspectives of promoting the relationship, the, realizing the potential relationship with China. I see there are four approaches over here. One is, of course, the special approach. The government has given economic zone to the uh, special economic zone to the Chinese investors. So that is a special approach. We have just heard about the product approach, which is that you prepare, you produce things only for Chinese market. That's another approach. The third one is, of course, the market linkages approach that we uh, take away all the problems which are affecting our market promotion or investment promotion, like uh, trade finance or uh, customs and tariffs issues. And the last but the not least is the value added approach or the value uh, in the in the value chain approach, which is possibly the RMG that we bring in inter, um, inputs and we produce goods and we will have to seek more regional value chains in these cases. So amongst these approaches, the special product or the market or the value chain, Bangladesh will have to decide to prioritize where exactly it want to put its two penny worth of effort at this moment. I would think I would think that we have done the special approach. Product approach is a good one, but value chain approach is also equally good. That will bring us to, to my last point, a sub point on that. When we discuss Bangladesh-China relationship, it does not exist means only limited, it is not only limited to Chinese and the Bangladesh market. We should jointly export third party market. We should export third country investment, third country trade. And that is the value chain approach. And I conc and concretely I propose, Myanmar is a prospect. It, the joint investment in Myanmar may have good impact on our current problems, which we are having our neighbors with those, uh, the, 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 uh, the, you know, the unwanted, refugees, which we are at this moment harbored by Bangladesh. So I see a huge critical uh, strategic importance on the choice of the approach we want to pick in, in this trade and industrial policy in the coming days vis-a-vis -vis China. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now I would like to, uh, we'll continue the discussion, but I'd like to give the floor to, the, uh, to our chief guest, Mr. MD Sharia Alam MP. Uh, Honorable State Minister for Foreign Affairs, Government of Bangladesh, because he has a very important meeting and he has to go. Uh, so, uh, Honorable Minister, over to you. Thank you very much for waiting patiently and listening to the audience and to the speakers so far. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for accommodating my uh, request, uh, uh, Dr. Famida, distinguished participants. Uh, uh, Excellencies, uh, Assalamu alaikum, and a very good uh, afternoon by now. Uh, uh, I, I join you to thank uh, CPD uh, for inviting me uh, to take part in this virtual dialogue uh, focusing on Bangladesh China uh, development cooperation. And I take this opportunity to extend my warmest uh, greetings to the peoples of uh, both the countries, China, Bangladesh and China, to a friendly country on the occasion of the 45th uh, anniversary of the establishment uh, of diplomatic ties uh, between us. Uh, past few years uh, have witnessed uh, a significant boost, I'm sure you'll all agree, uh, in our cooperation. Uh, the foundation uh, of which uh, was laid uh, by none other than uh, father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, who visited China twice uh, in 50s. 
uh, our relations uh, were uh, placed uh, on a, a significantly higher plane uh, following uh, Honorable Prime Minister's, uh, our Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's visit to China in 2014, a return visit by uh, President Xi Jinping in 2016, and uh, uh, another visit by Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina in, uh, in 2019. And uh, I feel privileged uh, to be uh, present uh, during all these visits. Uh, and uh, there were uh, visits uh, scheduled to mark the Mujib Borsho, but unfortunately due to uh, COVID pandemic, we had to, uh, we had to postpone that. Uh, but I'm sure there'll be more high level visits that will take place in the near future. Uh, uh, being the second largest economy of the world, uh, we know that China is a significant player uh, at the world stage. Uh, China is now the prime uh, driving force of global economic growth. Uh, today, uh, Chinese presence, uh, her presence is felt in every corner of the globe and countries seems to be vying to attract investment uh, from China. Uh, Bangladesh, like many other countries of the world, has joined the Belt and Road Initiative and also the China-led Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, AIIB, uh, in order to be benefited uh, from the injection of huge funds in infrastructural development and improvement of connectivity. As China has assured uh, that these initiatives have no other objective uh, than enhancing economic cooperation, even some developed countries from the West uh, have joined them as well. Uh, over the years, uh, China has uh, become an important development partner of Bangladesh, uh, trade and investment cooperation from the core of our uh, cooperation form, the core of our ever increasing engagement. Uh, and we can't deny that. Uh, bilateral trade between Bangladesh and China uh, recorded uh, uh, rapid uh, expansion in the last decade. Obviously, it's hugely tilted towards China, so, you know, 10 billion. It has crossed $10 billion mark quite a few years ago. And uh, our exports is uh, only reaching uh, about a billion dollar. Uh, so a lot of work to be done. Uh, and uh, we welcome the recent initiative and declaration made by the Chinese authorities, making a lot of our exportable uh, duty free uh, into China. Uh, and we are working closely with Chinese authority to improve this situation. And uh, uh, as I mentioned about the recent uh, uh, initiatives. Now we need to uh, uh, make a better use of those uh, facilities and align our manufacturing, uh, i.e. private sector, uh, to uh, cater the need of Chinese importers, uh, which are various speakers have talked about product and services. Uh, and uh, uh, talking about the strategy, uh, in fact, uh, uh, we are not uh, here to reinvent the wheel. Uh, through these discussions, we can kind of fine tune our ideas and policies. But Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina laid down a very clear policy uh, as far as China is concerned uh, uh, way back uh, uh, at least 10 years ago, uh, if not uh, during her first tenure in 1996-2001. And uh, the relationship as it stands today uh, is one of those uh, strategic partnership uh, that we actually uh, officially uh, declared in 2016 when uh, President Xi Jinping uh, paid his uh, visit uh, uh, in uh, to, uh, to Dhaka. Uh, we want to enhance uh, further the Chinese investment in our country uh, with buyback facilities, uh, which can contribute to further uh, reduction of this trade gap. Uh, it is a matter of deep satisfaction that the volume of uh, Chinese investment in Bangladesh is on rise. Uh, both government and private companies of China have shown keen interest uh, to increase their investment in Bangladesh. Uh, this uh, uh, undoubtedly uh, is a reflection of the cordial relation between the two countries. Uh, while China wants to gainfully invest uh, her uh, excess foreign currency reserve and shift some of our uh, labor intensive industries to other developing countries, uh, Bangladesh welcomes FDI with open arms uh, to spot industrialization uh, of our country. And uh, there obviously is a convergence of economic interest here in the, in, uh, of the two countries. Uh, we all we talked about it. The government uh, allocated uh, almost uh, 800 acres of land in Anwara uh, Chittagong district uh, for the establishment of a of an exclusive uh, Chinese industrial economic zone, uh, 
Uh, once open, the economic zone is expected to attract a considerable amount of Chinese investment. But uh, you know, uh, while we wait this Anwara project to be ready, obviously the Chinese investors are not waiting. Uh, there are multiple uh, investments, uh, projects uh, that came up uh, uh, into operation uh, in last couple of years, since 2014 in particular. Uh, uh, Chinese entrepreneurs are eager uh, uh, to take advantage of the uh, competitive labor force and want to shift some of their labor intensive manufacturing units to Bangladesh. Uh, some of uh, you uh, also uh, highlighted that, and uh, may I just humbly remind you that it's actually not, uh, uh, it's only recently, uh, when I say recently, it's not yesterday, but for last couple of years, Chinese manufacturers are uh, going abroad to manufacture the products that they have specialized in. Uh, they went to Cambodia, they went to Vietnam. And I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, for a longer term, uh, third destination is uh, being Bangladesh. And meanwhile, Bangladesh has built its own infrastructure and uh, at the opening remark, uh, uh, I listened to Dr. Fahmida say that uh, uh, our infrastructure, infrastructure gap is likely to widen. Uh, I uh, disagree with that comment because uh, that was probably true uh, 10 years ago, but our infrastructure gap uh, is, uh, is, uh, is narrowing. Uh, we are already uh, producing surplus electricity. Uh, we have uh, excess uh, bandwidth. Uh, our port facility uh, four or five years from today uh, will be world-class uh, Chittagong uh, port, uh, age-old Chittagong is operating efficiently. Uh, improve, uh, I, I wouldn't say that, uh, you know, in compared to the recent ports that's being set up in this region, uh, but uh, better performance is a lot better. Uh, Pyra is in operation uh, and also Mongla and meanwhile, uh, we will uh, have uh, Matarbari deep sea port. Uh, all the roads that we are building today are four lane. Uh, every corner of Bangladesh will have a uh, double gauge, mixed gauge, double track rail, railway system. Uh, Padma Bridge will be, uh, will be open for public use in, in a year or uh, two, let's say. Uh, we have started or about to start construction uh, Honorable Prime Minister is scheduled to lay the foundation of the railway bridge over uh, Jamuna alongside the Bangabandhu Bridge uh, on uh, 29th November. Uh, you know, all the airports, uh, we have increased capacity of our airports, our airlines. Uh, so but I don't uh, uh, think that uh, our infrastructure gap will be widening. Uh, or don't, if anything, it will, it will narrow down even further. Anyways, coming back to our today's discussion, uh, Bangladesh is in the midst of implementation of uh, various uh, mega uh, projects. I just highlighted a few. Uh, in view of the country's location, uh, many of you talked about strategic location, uh, brought uh, geopolitical issues in the discussion. Uh, uh, our location between South and Southeast Asia, uh, the infrastructure facilities of Bangladesh is expected to play an instrumental role in regional and inter-regional connectivity. And as I said, you know, all these policy decisions were made long ago. And uh, all the projects that I mentioned is not only going to benefit Bangladesh, but going to benefit the entire region. One of the speakers said that the physical distance between Bangladesh and China is only about 69 kilometers. And we'll be hoping for a day when we'll be able to connect China uh, uh, by, uh, in, in other transport modes other than air connectivity. And uh, Ambassador is aware that we have formally approached China to help us to extend uh, the railway and road link uh, uh, from uh, Teknaf uh, through uh, the state of Rakhine into Myanmar so that uh, we could connect China and uh, the other uh, ASEAN countries in uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, in view of resource constraints, uh, we have to rely on friends like China for support of our massive uh, development work. Uh, the Chinese government has been providing uh, funding support uh, for different infrastructure and development projects uh, in Bangladesh. And even though uh, this is uh, uh, not the case, it's, I, I don't uh, think it's the case for any such country actually that uh, this so-called debt trap uh, is often being used by certain quarter. Uh, but may I uh, just uh, 
remind you that uh, uh, China is relatively newcomer in the global capital market. Uh, I'm reading out from a text that I have prepared. Uh, debt extended uh, by it are not high in percentage term, globally speaking. According to a survey, China only accounts for 2% of the US dollar 6 trillion external debt owed by African countries, with the main creditors being World Bank, IMF, Paris Club members. ADB data has shown that Asia Pacific region needs an annual investment of US dollar 1.7 trillion for infrastructure development. That amount of money cannot be provided by any single country alone. And China is obviously no exception. On the question of Bangladesh debt repayment, uh, Bangladesh's track record uh, has been good. We have never defaulted on our loans. Our debt repayment capacity and credit worthiness is good. Our debt GDP ratio is within the safe limit. Our credit worthiness is positive and the institutional credit rating according to Moji's is also good. And as much as we are aware of our strength, uh, we are also aware of our limitations. So, you know, uh, I don't think uh, that uh, uh, that theory at all applies for Bangladesh and so to speak, I don't think it applies for uh, as I just pointed out the numbers, uh, you can go and do your own research in case of Africa. Uh, <clears throat> coming back to today's discussion again, uh, distinguished uh, uh, audience and friends. Uh, during the visit of Honorable Prime Minister, uh, Honorable Prime Minister of Bangladesh to China in 2014, uh, the ceiling of annual project grant uh, for Bangladesh was raised substantially to support more capacity building activities and health socioeconomic development projects in Bangladesh. Uh, already a number of projects uh, have been implemented in Bangladesh with Chinese funding, while many others are under implementation or in the pipeline. I don't want to go into the detail of those. Uh, I'm sure the other, all of you joined here today have all the list, including the, uh, the, the uh, started off, it started off probably the bridge over the Buriganga, and we are already into the eighth or ninth friendship, the Bangladesh-China friendship bridges. Uh, but there are so many numerous projects to mention. Uh, Chinese companies are also, I mean, that's kind of government infrastructure, but Chinese companies are also involved in implementation of number of public as well as private projects in Bangladesh in diverse sectors, such as uh, power generation, uh, coal mining, offshore oil and gas exploration, telecommunication, port and railway sector development, irrigation, and water resource development. Uh, but Chinese state-owned companies have been appointed to implement the two major components of the Bangla Bangladesh government's financed for the bridge project, uh, the river training work and the construction of core structure of the bridge. Uh, cooperation in diverse areas. Uh, a lot of you talked about diversity going forward. And, uh, you know, as I said, uh, we have laid down our policy loud and clear. And uh, cooperation in diverse areas of agriculture uh, sector has uh, brought our two countries even closer. Uh, Bangladesh and China have been collaborating in hybrid rice cultivation technology, agricultural machinery technology, exchange of uh, germplasm uh, resources of crops, um, uh, farm products processing, and te technical personal training as well. Uh, China has been providing scholarship to, uh, of higher studies uh, for higher studies, training and research program of a significant number of high level officials and experts uh, from Bangladesh every year uh, going to China. Uh, Shah, Shah Jalal Fertilizer Factory has been established with Chinese assistance. Uh, technically, uh, technical cooperation, collaboration is another important uh, plank of our relations with China. Uh, Bangladesh and China have been cooperating in a wide range of areas, including industries, agriculture, water resources development, uh, flood management, earthquake warning, science and technology, space research and application, uh, flood forecasting and sharing of hydrological data of common river and natural disaster preparedness. Uh, Bangladeshi scientists uh, from different fields have been receiving training in China for the last few years as well. Uh, China's interest in Bangladesh uh, stems uh, from a number of factors. Uh, I think uh, our Chinese friends actually mentioned that. The huge economic potential of Bangladesh, uh, high GDP growth rate, uh, our strategic location, an enormous market with the bargaining middle class, uh, in the past few years, uh, among the developing countries, the Bangladesh economy has performed extraordinarily well and manifested its resilience in the face of global financial uh, uh, downturn and the COVID crisis. Uh, and uh, 
uh, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, Dr. Raymond Suman went on to mention that you know potential lies ahead are even brighter and bigger uh, and wider uh, because we have it is no doubt this is the Asian century and uh, we are we have surpassed uh, West Asia has surpassed the other uh, continents uh, in terms of uh, GDP growth in last uh, decade or so and post COVID forecast suggests that uh, it the, that gap will be will be even greater uh, and better growth for Asia as a whole. Uh, uh, as China has been working to implement her vision uh, of transforming the country into a developed uh, and prosperous one, uh, Bangladesh has also uh, been making efforts to achieve uh, developed country status by 2041. Uh, closure economic collaboration uh, between our two countries will facilitate reaching these visions, the common goals. Uh, and I'm confident uh, that the mutually beneficial cooperation between Bangladesh and China in, uh, in various areas uh, will be further deepened uh, in the coming years, uh, which will help bring prosperity uh, for our uh, people. Uh, I thank you for your kind attention. Jai Bangla, Jai Bangla. Thank you very much, Honorable State Minister for Foreign Affairs. Uh, that was uh, really a, a brief landscape of the economic cooperation between Bangladesh and China. You have highlighted many areas where the relationship exists. And you also expressed the commitment of the current government in maintaining and strengthening the relationship between the two countries. Um, so uh, we are very encouraged and I'm sure our uh, Chinese uh, colleagues are also uh, very happy and, um, and look forward to strengthening the relationship. Now I go back to the open floor discussion. I want to hear, uh, take some comments and questions uh, from the audience because I have mentioned that a large number of participants are there. I'm sure they have, uh, they will have a lot of uh, comments to make and observations to make. So please, uh, earlier Mustafiz Bhai, you raised your hand. Yeah, please. Yeah. Please uh, make uh, your uh, intervention. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Excellencies, uh, Honorable Minister. Uh, thank you for the, for those comments, and it was a very rewarding experience. Uh, I would like to take a point which uh, Dr. De Pio mentioned with regard to the value chain. Uh, if we take uh, the, if we look into the Chinese uh, policies, we see that there is a marked shift uh, from export orientation. Uh, to more emphasis on uh, domestic demand stimulation. Uh, uh, so I, I think that uh, China imports currently $2,200 billion uh, uh, of various imports. And, and uh, I think the challenge for Bangladesh is to attract Chinese investment to Bangladesh, targeting the Chinese market, taking advantage of the uh, duty-free, quota-free market access that China has provided. I think that's where we should put our emphasis. And from that perspective, since Bangladesh is graduating in 2024, uh, can we think about uh, requesting China in our negotiations to, to extend the duty-free beyond 2024? In fact, when Samoa graduated in 2014, China has extended the duty-free, quota-free market access that it gives to the LDCs beyond uh, 2014. Uh, so I think that this is one concrete suggestion that I would like to put, uh, Honorable uh, the Excellency uh, Ambassadors uh, Bangladesh Ambassador to China and Chinese Ambassador to Bangladesh is here. Uh, so my concrete uh, proposal on the table will be that, uh, that we uh, also uh, have that type of extension beyond 2024 as part of South-South cooperation um, and, and Bangladesh-China negotiation. If that be the case, then obviously the investments that are, we are trying to attract from uh, China uh, to Bangladesh, uh, you know, uh, the, I think there will be an added incentive for those investments targeting the Chinese market. So that will be one proposal that I'd like to put on the table. Thank you, Dr. Farmanjan. Thank you, Professor Mustafizur Rahman. Uh, yes, um, I'll come back to uh, the panelist uh, later on. I can see Ambassador Humayun could be raising hand, but I'll come back to the panelist once again. Uh, so any other comments? I saw uh, 
Mr. Kamran. Uh, so, I see, yes, uh, Mr. Mohsin Khan, I can see. Yes, please uh, make your intervention. Yes, in one minute, please do so. Yes, yeah, this is Ambassador Mohsin Ali Khan. I would like to request the honorable, uh, respected Chinese ambassador for consideration that whether China can consider for uh, all but arms market access to Bangladesh. When I was ambassador in Canada in 2001, the Canadian, they have given us all but arms uh, facilities market access. And secondly, whether the China can provide us vocational training to our uh, labor force so that they can be uh, utilized for various uh, vocational uh, training and skills for working uh, in Bangladesh as well as abroad. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your uh, intervention. Uh, any other comments from the audience? Amita, can I come yes, in? Yes, Professor Amina Mohsin, Professor, International Relations Department, Dhaka University. Please make your comment. Thank you very much, Famita. I just have, uh, uh, you know, two queries. One, uh, in fact, these are to the panelists. I would like to know from Ambassador Humayun Kabir as well as General Munirul Zaman, that how, how do they see Bangladesh uh, placing itself in terms of vaccine diplomacy vis-a-vis -vis China, India, and the US, given the COVID situation, that is just one question. And the other is, you know, to general, uh, again, to General Munirizuman, he was talking about smart agriculture. And uh, recently, Mustafiz Bhai, you would recall that we were in a discussion on, co on employment opportunities. So, you know, like, uh, I was just wondering that given the impact of the COVID situation, I mean, agriculture had been a mainstay. I mean, uh, because given Bangladesh's uh, population, uh, General Murizuman, do you think that smart agriculture and get, because there has been so much emphasis on technology in this discussion, how, how do you think that, you know, we can use our uh, population. I mean, is it going to have a negative impact or not? That is the second question. If I have time, I'll come back to the sec security scenario later. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other queries and uh, comments? If not, then I would uh, go back to my panelists. I, yeah. Okay, Mr. Siddiqui. Okay, please yes. um, make your comments. Uh, uh, okay. Um, uh, whenever we discuss about the Chinese cooperation, uh, some people raise the issue of death trap. And today morning, uh, we, we, I just listened to Professor Raman Suman. He has given a very interesting uh, opinion that the, the debt uh, converted to equity can enhance the business. So can I request the Honorable Ambassador of China to clarify this point? When, why the issue of death trap is a so widely discussed issue? related to the debt or investment of China. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I'll go back to the panelists, but before that, any other, I can see um, other Chinese colleagues also who have joined from China. Uh, so if you want to make any comment, short comment intervention. Uh, okay, let me go back to the panelists. I'll give one minute to each of them. Uh, so, uh, I'll just reverse the order now. Uh, I'll start with General Munir Zaman. Uh, so you, there, is, there are specific questions posed to you. So please uh, respond. Thank you, half a minute. And I will just respond to the two questions which were directed to me. First is about the vaccine. Vaccine will be fundamental to our getting back to normal. So the term that I would like to use is again autonomy. So we must maintain vaccine autonomy. We have been offered vaccine support or access by Sinotech from China. We've also been offered the same sort of support facilities from India. There is also offer from the Oxford vaccine in the UK and we must be open to all three so that wherever we get the first vaccine, we must be able to access them. At the same time, we must be able to access them 
at an affordable cost that we can afford with our money or with the financial support that we receive from the vaccine producing country or other friendly countries. So in terms of vaccines, we must remain completely open so that we are able to access the vaccines whenever they're available in the market. On the second question, in the smart agriculture, the employability doesn't go down. What it offers is that better understanding through technology. For example, uh, in case of irrigation needs, it can access the soil conditions much better so that the exact amount of the water support that is needed at a particular season is given. Or for example, for pesticide, it can observe the nature of pesticides that is needed. So it comes with offer for all sorts of technological innovations and technological support that improves the productivity. It does not hamper the employability in the agricultural sector. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so Mr. Mahbubur Rahman, uh, yes. Uh, look, uh, anything particular, but I would go back to my uh, three points, actually. Uh, one, of course, the infrastructure is ongoing. I think there is a uh, wider scope to do that one. The second part, of course, the value chain. And I think if there is a huge potential for Bangladesh upper industry to have a win-win propositions with the Chinese counterpart. Uh, can you be a bit louder? I think we, yeah, your voice is a bit, is fading. Is that okay now? Yeah, now it's okay. Okay, sorry about this. I think the, uh, the, uh, the three points that I mentioned, the domestic demand of Bangladesh growing, infrastructure requirements, and the thirdly is about the supply chain reconfiguration. Within that, infrastructure is an ongoing uh, engagement with China. And thus, I think uh, now we'll take a little bit of different turn, like from power generation to transmission and distribution. If it comes to the power, then of course the port and other stuff is going on. The point, the two points that I made, actually, uh, one regarding the supply chain reconfiguration. I think our main export of the apparel, while we are in the front end and cutting and making, can have more synergy of having to have some investments on a targeted basis, especially for us to get enabled uh, in terms of offering product diversification to the market, as well as to shorten the lead time and uh, to have a more synergy with Chinese market vis-a-vis -vis, uh, world market. Uh, and, and, and that trade, uh, because BRI is not only the infrastructure, BRI is also about the flow and the trade, both together. So from the trade perspective, I think it is important for us to look into the possibilities about using the RMB, uh, because that also will put us into a diverse uh, currency baskets, especially when the export will rise and I think that's the direction of the travel than what it is today, then that will make, make the natural hedge for all the parties. Uh, because if import and export happens in the same currency, albeit at this moment, there is a huge gap. But I think uh, with the regional cooperation, this currency will come into the play uh, and where the bank like us can really, really uh, uh, make some good contribution in the value. The, I think that's the two, two major, major area, I would say. Uh, the service infrastructure, especially uh, other than the physical infrastructure, the service infrastructure, I think, has been touched upon by quite a few uh, uh, honorable panelists because one is about education and skill sets enhancement. I think that is one area that we, we require to upskill our people. Uh, second part would be the healthcare and, um, and ICT. The healthcare, of course, we have understood how mm -hmm. Uh, China has handled the pandemic vis-a-vis -vis the more and more innovations are coming up from, uh, from China about more uh, healthcare and, and, and of course the hardware being the uh, equipments of the healthcare. And within that space, I also see uh, that um, ICT, especially uh, we have experienced the pandemic situations to uh, gear up that what has been the trend, I think fast tracking is happening through the ICT uh, enablement, especially when we see Bikash and, and Alibaba's investments in, 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 in Bangladesh. I think that can be much more widened to have a tech enabled growth journey in the years to come. Thank you. Um, 
So uh, our Chinese um, participants, Professor Cheng Min uh, or Dr. Uh, Dr. Wang Shida. So would you like to make any comments at this point in time? Uh, if not, then I'll just move quickly to uh, Dr. Inamul Haq, if you have, if you want to make any last minute comment in 30 seconds. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think I will make uh, three points. Uh, one on the vaccine issue, uh, I think uh, vaccine uh, issue, the point that should be noted, I think we will not probably go back to the normal as before. So we have to learn how to live with it. And that's something that we have to consider instead of waiting for vaccine, getting 7 billion people into the vaccination. And if it's not a permanent vaccination, if it is, has to be done every six months or every year, it's an useless exercise for me. So I think that part has to be understood carefully. Uh, second is the issue of smart agriculture. I think there is a lot to learn. Vertical agriculture is happening in China quite strongly compared to many other countries. So we can develop that as a cooperation strategy. And I think that is important for Bangladesh because it's a landscape economy and we are losing about 80,000 hectares of land per year. So that is the third one is important, which I believe is, a, is more of a strategic goal, uh, which is a uh, look at uh, build Bangladesh. Bangladesh has a strategic location. Build Bangladesh uh, ports uh, with investment through many, you know, including Chinese, as a, as a Rotterdam of Europe. Like think about South Asia being the largest uh, population concentration, lot of imported products, and we need something, uh, a Rotterdam of Europe. And if we say Rotterdam of Europe, we are still dependent on Singapore, and Singapore is the feeding uh, port for us. I think we need to shift it towards somewhere. The Hambon Tota is a good example, but we need to relocate the Hambon Tota and link it with Bangladeshi port because Bangladesh is connected to the Northeast and other regions, Nepal and Bhutan. So if you look in the economic uh, you know, the corridor, we have a significant advantage of this. And so I think we need not only the port infrastructure, but also other infrastructure related to the facilitated, uh, you know, things of the Rotterdam or the free port. And that is something South Asia should consider. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, so uh, last in this segment, uh, before we go yes, to our I'm guests back. of honor, Ambassador Humayun Kubir, you have your 30 seconds. Uh, please unmute yourself. Ambassador three Kubir, yes. Quick, yes, three quick comments. Uh, on vaccine, I think I fully agree with what uh, has already been told by General Munir Zaman and uh, uh, Dr. Ramal Hawk. Um, on other issues, Dr. Deboprio has mentioned a little bit, but I think since Chinese ambassador is here, uh, in view of the recent developments, a uh, few months, what is happening in the region, larger region, I think China, we appreciate China has been trying to help us with regard to the resolution of the Rohingya problem in terms of return of the Rohingya refugees to Myanmar. I think it has a strategic value also. I should, China should think about it. Uh, recently, China has, uh, has been trying to revive the trilateral dialogue. I think if they become a little more active, the benefit that we could get is now China has uh, CMAC uh, with Myanmar. Uh, Bangladesh, we talk about BCIM. We could talk about BCM. That's the possibility from a strategic point of view that will give two benefits to Bangladesh. One is connecting to ASEAN and then through ASEAN connecting to China. It's a larger landscape that we can get. This is number one we have to think seriously. Second one is Bangladesh is still, we are not connected to an active major economic grouping. Bimstek is there, going nowhere. Uh, now, my sense is that RCEP, although going through a little bit of hiccup, will come back soon. And with the, if there is a change in the US uh, political structure, I mean, TPP could also come back. That means these two infrastructure, economic infrastructure would be coming into play possibly soon. If we can have a connection to uh, uh, ASEAN, then we can get access to, uh, in a way, to the larger market, for example, 
uh, comprising the RCEP. And we must actively look at uh, where the mouth is. Uh, so we should uh, think about actively from a strategic point of view uh, and from the future uh, of Saudi, uh, from, from, from Bangladesh um, uh, in terms of our economic growth horizons, for example. Uh, so with these uh, words, I'd like once again, I'd like to thank uh, the CPD for inviting me and hosting this wonderful uh, dialogue. And uh, also thank uh, Chairman, uh, uh, Professor Raman Thank you. And yes. Thank, thank you, you very much, Ambassador uh, Mayan Kubir, and thank you to all the panelists and all those who have just participated in the open floor discussion. Now I would turn to uh, to the remarks to be made by our guests of honor. First, I would like to invite His Excellency Mr. Mahbub Zaman, Bangladesh Ambassador to the People's Republic of China, Government of Bangladesh. Uh, so uh, I know you have been waiting patiently. Uh, you joined uh, very early before everyone joined. So uh, thank you very much for your patience. And uh, we are really grateful that you make it. Over to you. Uh, thank you um, uh, for giving me this uh, opportunity. Um, uh, am I being audible? Uh, am I, uh, is it, yeah? Yes, yes, you're, yeah. you are okay. very much. Oh, okay. Um, uh, respected uh, uh, Chairman, um, uh, Professor Rahman Soban, I thank you for uh, you know setting the tone of uh, the virtual uh, you know dialogue, and of course, um, and uh, I will also take the cue from uh, Mr. Mahbubur Rahman, the uh, HSBC CEO, uh, who uh, uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, emphasized on the three points: the uh, uh, investment side, the consumption, import, exports, and also uh, uh, the uh, uh, domestic demand. Uh, so. Uh, I recollect that last year, uh, before I moved to, uh, you know, uh, uh, Beijing as a Bangladesh envoy, uh, CPD had organized an international conference in Dhaka that would have been on uh, BRI positioning Bangladesh within comparative perspectives. Uh, so again, as I think it as a, you know, uh, you know linkage, uh, we are meeting at a virtual, you know, dialogue uh, uh, titled Bangladesh-China Development Cooperation. And the objective uh, uh, is to discuss the outlook for future bilateral uh, relationship um, uh, through investment and trade. And uh, I would like to start off uh, uh, with the premise uh, that, uh, uh, that the outlook or prospect uh, is indeed, you know, right. And, uh, but uh, however, the fact remains that through conscious and rational choices and decisions, uh, 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 we can influence uh, the outlook and of course predict uh, a possible, you know, outcome. And uh, those who have been assembled here the academics, the researchers, stakeholders, civil society have a role to play as they can provide uh, uh, perspectives on contemporary issues. So uh, this is my starting point. At the meeting on the BRI, I uh, uh, emphasized that, you know, that essence of governance is, uh, would be choice and diplomacy offers us choices. So uh, these choices must be negotiated with other sovereign actors uh, that are not subject to a particular state's, uh, you know, uh, customs. And, um, and we had uh, heard other, uh, you know, speakers uh, who had said uh, that we had to look at the competence, strength, advantages uh, of uh, the country concerned with whom we would, you know, have economic uh, partnerships uh, and it, whether it would be in our advantage. Uh, uh, we have seen that uh, our Professor Ramansoban has also said that China has emerged as the world's largest economy in purchasing uh, power parity terms uh, with India in the third place. And between 1990 and 27, uh, Chinese share of global GDP grew from 1.6% to 15.2%. And uh, uh, presently, China accounts for 21% of global sovereign wealth capital and holds around 19% of US Treasury bills. So, uh, 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 and people are saying, analysts, that uh, within uh, a decade, uh, China will uh, surpass others and be the uh, you know strongest uh, economy. <coughs> uh, 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 so uh, at this critical you know juncture juncture of 45 years of establishment of our bilateral ties, uh, it would be pertinent to uh, you know reflect on our economic relations and recollect uh, that, how this has impacted us uh, uh, in our uh, process of economic development. Uh, and uh, we have a long-standing economic relation. And uh, especially uh, uh, if we see from the investment side, public and the private investment 
uh, there is a huge amount of uh, public investment uh, uh, from the Chinese side. And uh, you all know that the three fast track you know, mega projects under Chinese assistance are the Pod Podma multipurpose beach project, Padma Bridge rail link project, and the Kornofuli, uh, you know, uh, talent projects. Uh, you know that during the visit of uh, Chinese, uh, uh, you know, a premier, uh, Xi Jinping, um, in 2016, a memorandum of understanding uh, of investment and industrial productivity cooperation was signed. And um, uh, this uh, agreement contained uh, 27 projects, uh, uh, which amounted to um, uh, around US dollar uh, uh, 23 billion, it's a huge sum. And it is also very significant in the sense that this was the first presence of the uh, Chinese uh, premier after a, a, a period of almost 25 to 30 years during the uh, during the uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, our prime minister uh, Sheikh Hasina's uh, you know time. And uh, if we see uh, at the progress of uh, these fast track uh, mega projects, we see that uh, uh, they are making uh, a considerable amount of uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 yeah, uh, yeah, progress. Uh, until now, 26% of the work has been completed for this uh, Podma Bridge Rail project. And uh, under the Tunnel River Konofuli, uh, it has also made remarkable you know, progress. Almost 58% uh, has been completed. And we have also the uh, project related to installation of single point mooring with double pipeline. It has made 41%, uh, uh, you know, so, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's quite visible, you know, this uh, public uh, sector projects. And uh, on the other side, we see that uh, the Chinese uh, uh, government also provides us with grants. And uh, under the Chinese grants, we have constructed uh, eight Bangladesh-China friendship bridge, which is very important for our infrastructure, you know, development. And you have also seen uh, 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 that we have uh, uh, gone to this, the Bangabundu International Convention Center, which was uh, built through Chinese, uh, uh, you know, assistance. Now coming to the uh, uh, very important part, which uh, Farmida already uh, uh, said, that about the investment, uh, uh, you know, scenario, uh, China has become uh, the top uh, uh, investor in Bangladesh. Uh, last year, I also, uh, you know, uh, attended a uh, meeting organized by PwC, uh, uh, and I saw a huge amount of interest uh, for Chinese companies to invest in Bangladesh. Likewise, during my stay in uh, Beijing, uh, during all this uh, uh, period, uh, you know, I have been making frequent tours and, 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 and the situation in China has, of course, improved uh, considerably. Uh, you know, uh, uh, they have been able to contain uh, this epidemic and I'm making extensive tours. Uh, one was telling about the Shanghai uh, International Conference for Imports. Uh, 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 you, last year, uh, our advisor, Mr. Salman Rahman, uh, and I myself attended this uh, you know, uh, meeting in uh, you know, Shanghai, uh, and it was a huge success. We saw a, a, a spontaneous reaction from the potential you know, Chinese investors, business persons, and, uh, and they, had, uh, they said that we had historical you know, ties and Bangladesh is so close uh, uh, to us. Why can't we have more trade, more interaction uh, uh, with uh, you know, Bangladesh? And, uh, and uh, uh, you know, see, uh, uh, Fact and statistics-wise, uh, Bangladesh uh, 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 has in, uh, the investment inflow of Chinese investment to Bangladesh has uh, invest, uh, increased significantly. It was over 700 million uh, 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 US dollars last year, and before in 2018 it was 5 or 6 million. Uh, so there's a significant, you know, uh, uh, jump. Uh, uh, and in the export processing zone and in the Beza and uh, Bebza, uh, I personally have, uh, 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 you know, uh, made some uh, dent or mark by, by bringing along, uh, you know, some Chinese investment. One is the uh, 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 Fortune 500 Chinese company, Yabang, Yabang Group, which are going to uh, invest in a uh, industrial, uh, chemical industrial, petrochemical, you know, project. Uh, likewise, uh, you know, in the trade sector, uh, China is our largest, you know, trade partner, uh, and um, we have more than 16 billion US dollar trade uh, each year, and uh, we import more than 25 to 30 percent of our imports uh, from China. And China is the largest, uh, uh, single largest sourcing country for RMG and uh, textile industry, raw materials, machineries, and chemicals. My personal experience is that uh, uh, 
uh, price wise competition wise quality wise uh, uh, the uh, the businessman and the traders in bangladesh have a distinct preference uh, uh, you know for those goods uh, you know uh, 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 you know produced by the chinese uh, entrepreneurs and uh, industries and uh, uh, you know we are planning to open uh, uh, three weekly flights uh, by bangladesh uh, you know biman uh, considering the uh, 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 huge demand uh, of the traffic uh, uh, cargo is al already there southern china is already operating and also eastern china from kunming but we have seen a uh, huge uh, demand uh, for uh, trade and investment opportunities uh, from the bangladesh side and uh, uh, and and we uh, uh, we have seen that uh, most importantly uh, this uh, uh, awarding of this uh, uh, 97 percent of the Bangladeshi products uh, 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 originating from Bangladesh, uh, uh, this duty-free, uh, you know, access to Chinese market is a big boost and a boom, uh, you know, for us. And 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 I am confident uh, that uh, this will uh, uh, give a very much advantage uh, 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 over other countries uh, 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 for uh, you know Bangladesh. And uh, we have calculated that uh, this full duty-free treatment to Bangladesh would extend to on a HS uh, eight-digit basis to almost uh, over 8,000, uh, you know, products out of the 8,285 tariff lines. Uh, so you see that people uh, have uh, uh, in Bangladesh uh, some are apprehensive that how will this help us and are this of our product interest? I can vouch for that. That of course, this uh, most of the product that will come. Uh, duty free under this uh, you know access uh, will be of uh, export interest you know for bangladesh and uh, bangladesh would enjoy a preferential margin of around i think 10 to 15% uh, for their products and um, comprehensive coverage to 97% of bangladesh products uh, may uh, you know uh, incentivize and induce the invention uh, of cryptocurrency uh, brought us alternatives to the to traditional financial system and set up their factories Hex uh, is the Bangladesh. next step and, in and that I evolution to, uh, designed to that, uh, many of them are already uh, uh, investing in the uh, export processing zone and uh, we know that our honorable state minister has said that in uh, uh, chirogong anwara they have uh, for the chinese uh, investors potential and actual investors we have set up uh, industrial, you know, zone, uh, uh, and we have uh, seen quite a considerable amount of, uh, you know, uh, interest. Uh, so, uh, uh, in the, uh, you know, um, uh, context of time uh, for giving opportunity to others, also, um, I have decided to, you know, shorten, uh, you know, my uh, speech a little bit. But let me say that, uh, you know, uh, uh, why Bangladesh uh, needs, uh, you know, uh, Chinese uh, investment and also greater trade uh, expansion uh, 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 because already uh, we have seen that uh, we have a vision uh, to implement uh, the following goals and objectives uh, under the vision 2021 and uh, 2041 delta plan 20, 2100 and of course there is this global commitment uh, uh, to achieve sustainable development goals by the year 2030 uh, 2030 uh, SDG goals is very important, and I have personally visited um, many uh, cities in China. They are very much conscious about environmental standards. I've seen uh, plants and processing industries uh, uh, which are uh, uh, which are focusing on making uh, uh, you know composite materials, uh, uh, building and construction materials out of waste products, and 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 they are focusing more on energy. You know efficiency so uh, it's a quite an amazing you know experience uh, for me uh, um, so um, uh, i'm ho hopeful that uh, with the sdg goals of clean and sustainable uh, you know cities uh, smart cities uh, uh, chinese uh, assistance uh, 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 would be uh, very, very much uh, you know helpful for us and of course uh, as our honorable state minister has said that the needs for uh, infrastructure development uh, is huge and fast, uh, you know, we cannot, uh, you know, rely on uh, one uh, particular, you know, country. Uh, so um, uh, the joint country initiatives and financing are already being done by the government, and we have this mode of financing under consortium, multi-country, and institutions. Uh, these are ongoing process. So we have to explore all models and options and find a judicious mix uh, without being overly dependent on uh, any single, uh, you know, uh, uh, source. Uh, uh, so we should look into the subject matter, uh, you know, uh, of uh, the economy or the economics. Uh, you know, there is no one-size-fits solution. 
uh, as some you know neoclassical economists would lead us to believe. Uh, so the analysis should be based on practice and experiences rather than uh, on, on, on theory itself. Uh, so lastly, uh, uh, but not the least, in the ultimate analysis, uh, you know, uh, 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 these allegations of so-called debt uh, trap, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, you know, uh, it's not, uh, you know, true. Uh, it's, um, uh, you know, uh, hyped up thing. Uh, it is for the individual countries uh, to take their needs, priorities, in interests, and objectives into account while seeking loans and developmental assistance. But of course, street monitoring is uh, also important for ensuring quality, maintenance of standards and the complete completion of projects. So in the uh, BRI uh, uh, circle, it is a noticeable thing that China has become more responsive, responsive to the concerns uh, uh, of other the recipient countries. And uh, they have said that uh, uh, the recipient countries will be consulted more and their concerns will be taken into account. And uh, of course, Bangladesh has always been uh, uh, steadfast in the protection of uh, their national objectives, interests, and priorities. And we have, of course, never defaulted uh, on our loans. Our track record is very high, uh, uh, very good. So uh, uh, at the conclusion, I would say that uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, all our partners are welcome to be associated in our quest for self-reliance and achieving the goals of Vision 2041 to be a developed country. And father of the nation, Bongo Bondu Sheikh Mujur Rahman, always had dreamed of a self-reliant and prosperous Sonar Bangla and advocated a policy of friendship towards all and malice towards all. I thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Excellency, Mr. Mabu Guzaman, Bangladesh Ambassador to the People's Republic of China. Uh, now, I would like to request our uh, another guest of honor, His Excellency Mr. Li Jiming, Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary to Bangladesh, People's Republic of China. Uh, so, Excellency, thank you very much for patiently waiting. You have been waiting more about three hours almost now. So um, we are also eagerly waiting to listen from you. So over to you, Excellency. Kindly unmute, unmute yourself, the microphone. Yes, if you can unmute yourself, we can't hear you. Okay. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Hamida. And thank you, Professor uh, Sopham, for inviting me to this very, very important uh, seminar. Uh, the reason I said it is very important is that uh, I think uh, this seminar is held in a very important moment. You see, uh, probably you have been noticed that uh, China is uh, holding the fifth plenary session of the CPC Central Committee. And the purpose of this meeting is to draw up the 14th five-year plan for China and also the uh, plan for the next 15 years, not only the five years. It is very important to China. It matters to China and it also I'm sure matters to the world. And also this is a very important moment that uh, we know, all know that uh, the US is in, busy in its uh, general election. So I think this week is very, very important to the world. So we picked up this very important moment and also picked up a I think the internet, yes. In the infrastructure and so on. And also the Chinese investment to Bangladesh is very important to China because uh, Chinese companies sees Bangladesh market is one of the most important market for investment. And uh, probably uh, our friend might not uh, being told that uh, the biggest 
ever Chinese concessional loan for the project over globally is in Bangladesh, the Padma Rail Link uh, project, which is, is uh, 3.1 billion US dollars. The largest globally issued from a Chinese side ever. So this is a very important market for China. And uh, for my personally, I've been uh, observed that uh, they, are very, they are very interesting and also encouraging development in the Chinese investment in Bangladesh. At least there are four of them. Number one is that Chinese investment in, more, in, in, in Bangladesh is switching from small projects to bigger projects. We're talking about 1 million US dollars or so. Number two, it is switching from light industries like garment industries to heavy industries and infrastructures as well. Uh, my, my hometown is in Kunming and the Kunming steel mill is seriously preparing to invest a steel mill in Bangladesh. And they have been working on it for more than three years. And probably the, uh, Ambassador Dama, my friend, knows about this project. They've been with, working for, for more than three years now. And it's now already passed the uh, procedures approvals from uh, the Ministry of uh, uh, Finance and the Ministry of, uh, uh, even the Ministry of Law because they've, they have some switch of uh, uh, the identities and so on. And now it's in the, in the commit, uh, economic committee of the cabinet of the Honorable Prime Minister's office. So I hope that this can be finalized soon. This is number two, from light to heavy. And also, we can see Chinese investment is switching from low value added ones to high value added ones. We have a mobile phone production invested in Bangladesh. And they are already preparing, actively producing mobile phones in Bangladesh now. Uh, not everybody knows about that. And also in telecommunications and other high value added industries in Bangladesh. And the fourth, it is switching from direct investment into direct plus indirect investment, which means uh, financing in this market. So all those gives us very, very encouraging signals that it is moving in a very, very healthy direction. And uh, our friend might have already noticed that Chinese government recently announced that China will impose a new development pattern, which means a do circulation development pattern, domestic circulation plus international circulation. And some people inter uh, interpret this do circulation as a closed door circulation, closed door policy of China, which is patently wrong. China, Chinese government encourages its businesses to go, glo go global, even border to the border markets, but mainly to, the, to investment in neighboring countries, especially countries in the Belt and Road Initiative. And of course, Chinese 
companies also encountered some difficulties in Bangladesh, mainly its uh, lack of infrastructure and sometimes the bureaucracy is there and red types and uh, uh, efficiency of the government agencies and so on. Also, as one of our uh, participants once mentioned that the lack of uh, uh, pro uh, working skills of those uh, uh, laborers, local laborers, they need some further vocational skills, training, and so on. Those are the problems that uh, we're facing. But the development moment, momentum is uh, very, very encouraging. And uh, I'm very, very confident to say that we will witness some more optimistic development in terms of Chinese investment in Bangladesh. But in order to achieve that, probably we need to accomplish several things. Here I have some specific suggestions. Number one is that we should join our hands to increase the political mutual trust between our two countries. Our previous uh, panelists uh, correctly mentioned some uh, high level exchanges between China and Bangladesh, especially the recent exchange visit of our national leaders. President Xi visited Bangladesh in 2016 and Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina visited China in 2019. Both visits created a lot of consensuses between the two governments and stabilized as, and strengthened the political mutual trust between our two countries. What do we need to do more? Yeah, we need to keep this momentum. And the, the embassy will do our due job and diligently to promote in this regard. And the second is that we need to let the Belt and Road Initiative become a popular initiative in Bangladesh. We need to have people understand this initiative deepen, deepen and uh, more deep and, and uh, probably more people accept it because uh, we still can hear a lot of noises, especially noises from the West and some other uh, countries about that trap or whatever. So we need to make this initiative be understood by more Bangladesh people and in deeper way. And the third is we need to improve the Bangladesh investment environment further and increase and upgrade the working skill of Bangladesh workers. And the embassy will be most help to be of some help because uh, every year we offer a scholarship, more than 1,000 scholarship for vocational training trainees to, tra to be trained in China for say one year or so, even longer. And uh, recently we were considering to set up some uh, more systematic uh, relationship between vocational training institutions in China and in Bangladesh. And the trainees might be trained, say, two years in Bangladesh and uh, at least one year in China. By these ways, that we can improve this uh, in this regard. And fourth, I think 
we need to increase the promotion of Bangladesh as an investment market to Chinese business circles. I think we have done very little because uh, uh, I think we need to join hands to make activities, promotion activities in China, both online, in online way or, or sometimes probably also we can consider offline ways to make Bangladesh more popular in China. And the fifth, I think we have to consider at least to sign two MOUs between the two governments. Number one is what just, uh, I think uh, the, uh, our, one of our uh, guests, uh, Mr. Mabuk Ur Rahman, the uh, president from HSBC mentioned several times, Chinese currency cooperation with Bangladesh. We need some monetary cooperation between the two countries, between the two governments. Actually, I recently wrote a letter to the Honorable Governor of the Bank of Bangladesh and suggested that probably Bangladesh can also consider as many other countries to sign a currency swap agreement with China. And I offered that uh, probably China can loan at least 5 billion US dollars worth of RMB to the Bank of Bangladesh as foreign reserve to diversify the foreign reserve structure of the bank, of the Central Bank of Bangladesh. And since the Chinese currency is widely accepted as the trade settlement currency between China and many Southeast Asian countries. Why not Bangladesh? And number two MOU I'm proposing is a G2G PPP MOU between the two governments. In fact, uh, before, right before I entered this meeting room, I was on the phone calling the CEO of PPP authorities. A, and uh, the CEO, who is a, a lady, she agreed to put this and work together with the embassy and to push forward to realize the signing of a PPP agreement between the two governments. And after that, it will facilitate much more Chinese investment into the, the, the Bangladesh market. That is for sure. So I have some uh, suggestions like this, and uh, I'm open to comments from uh, our Bangladesh friends, especially from uh, our honorable chairman, uh, Professor Sobham. You, at the beginning, right, at the beginning of this uh, seminar, you correctly guided us that uh, we should consider Chinese investment in a broader way, in a broader vision rather than a narrow vision, because there are so much things that we should think of. It is not purely, not merely a economic issue. It might mean much more than that, Chinese investment. Uh, and uh, Professor Sobman, I was, I, I am hoping to meet with you uh, actually, upon my arrival to Dhaka, 
I tried to call on you, but unfortunately you were out of town at that time. I was told by your staff members. And uh, after that, we, we were already in the pandemic. So I missed the opportunity, but I still looking forward to meeting you in person and to uh, in search for, for your guidance and for your uh, advices and how to improve our relationship between the two countries and the, between the two people. I think, yes, uh, I think uh, ambassadors internet is unstable at this point. Um, okay. Uh, can you hear me? Any, so, uh, yes, hello? now we can, uh, yeah, we can hear you now, but we can't see you. So. Oh, sorry. Because uh, the yeah internet connections uh, sometimes uh, yes hurt. it's unstable. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so at least you 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 have already heard uh, what I'm talking. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for for your uh, elaborate uh, discussion on the collaboration with Bangladesh and cooperation with Bangladesh Chinese. Um, the Chinese support and uh, also Chinese investment uh, in various areas. Uh, so I think um, at this point in time, I would like to request our chairman, Professor Emma Sovan, to make his concluding remarks. We are three hours into this discussion. I think this is one of the you know longest discussions we have. Uh, it only shows that how important the issue is and how much interest uh, people of Bangladesh have on this. So over to you, sir. Sir, you'll have to unmute. Sir, you'll have to unmute yourself. Okay. Now okay. Can I be heard? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I've already had my say, but I will respond to a few remarks. Uh, to begin with, I would again like to express my appreciation for CPD, who has continued to keep up the dialogue with our Chinese partners on addressing the future of China-Bangladesh relations. Yeah. We've had a very constructive discussion, and I'm particularly grateful to the two ambassadors uh, for being with us today. Uh, I'm sorry that in fact, I did not have the opportunity to meet with uh, Ambassador from China uh, just after he came in. And then we have now been separated by COVID. We are looking forward to uh, China initiatives in producing vaccines uh, to in fact help Bangladesh to come out of COVID. And we would see that as a very positive contribution to our relationships, which will enable us to then once again have face-to-face uh, -face meetings. Uh, the ambassador ended the discussion on a very positive note in the sense that he, I made quite concrete sets of uh, suggestions. I was very impressed with his idea of uh, making a concession loan to the uh, uh, Bangladesh Bank of $5 billion, uh, which would in fact actually go in and constitute a part of our reserves and would help us to diversify our reserve base and make more active use of the RIN and BB. In fact, actually, this is a perfectly sensible idea since uh, China is our biggest uh, source of imports. So to in fact have gr greater opportunities to make settlements on the basis of the 
Chinese currency is a very constructive situation. And I hope uh, 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 the Bangladesh Bank governor and the finance minister have been listening into this. I will be given the opportunity to, in fact, actually uh, respond to the suggestion of the ambassador. Uh, no, I will just make two rounds of remarks and try to, in fact, do this in terms of very positive sets of suggestions. Uh, first is, of course, to deal with the issue of uh, a more focused investment strategy for Bangladesh. Uh, we have had many such discussions and many dis generalized discussions on investment opportunities. But at the end of the day, a lot of this still remains in the realm of generalities. Now, out of the 97% of goods entering into uh, in the Chinese import basket, which have given us duty-free access, our ambassador Mehboob has identified that there are 8,000 such projects, products which have access to the Chinese market on a duty-free basis. Now, what I would request my colleagues at CPD and indeed other think tanks is the next time we sit down to have a discussion on investment, I would like some very concrete, well-researched uh, presentations to be made on at least 10 major items of export potential drawn from the list of 8,000 products, uh, which can in fact access Chinese markets on a sufficient scale. And if we can in fact follow this up with consultations through the uh, uh, courtesy of the ambassador with Chinese think tanks to then also identify Chinese companies, which could in fact be bought in and given positions in our investment zone over here to in fact actually then uh, make major investments in these 10 clearly identified products. At the moment, all initiatives for product identification are left to the individual investors. And certainly Bangladesh investors have not been particularly on enterprising, either in responding to the uh, duty-free access to the Indian market or to avail of the 8,000 uh, product opportunities in China. And so I think they need to be pushed at the elbow and taken forward. And I would then hope that our colleague from Hong Kong and Shanghai Bank can in fact actually then play some facilitating role in that process in identifying specific products. Uh, obviously we need to do similar exercises. CPD has mentioned this many times in our discussion. And again, part of the failure is our own to in fact identify similar project opportunities for accessing the Indian market. In relation to this again, very concretely, we should look for very concrete identifications of specific projects which are at risk of losing their market space in the uh, US and European market because of the emerging protectionist policies targeted to China, uh, which in fact are taking place over there. Again, Chinese entrepreneurs have made some identifications. Bangladesh uh, MCCI is always talking about it, but no one has really come up with concrete identification of some of the key areas where in fact China's market space is going to be limited over there and they themselves recognize this and are looking for investment openings where they can in fact maintain links with the Chinese market, uh, with the US and other markets, which may be directly cut off to them. Uh, thirdly, out of this again, as Devapriyo has also mentioned, 
uh, there is a question of identifying also the uh, value chain access. Again, we have failed conspicuously in uh, identifying value chain linkages with India where we had opportunities. And here again, we have failed. Uh, obviously, both foreign investors as well as Chinese investors will be interested to know what are at least some concrete sets of opportunities for Bangladesh to plug into particular value chains. China is in reverse plugging into Bangladesh value chains and are in fact a very important and key part of Bangladesh's export sector, particularly the RMG where Chinese uh, suppliers of intermediate products are in fact linked to the Bangladesh value chain. So here I'm making these as very concrete suggestions. Uh, I don't want people to just go on nodding their heads. And I will just, I, I will in fact periodically take my colleagues certainly at CPD to task to see what specific action they are taking over here. And where I will concretely request uh, the Chinese ambassador is that this sort of exercise would be best done in partnership with some Chinese uh, research institutions who can in fact actually give us access to Chinese data and identification of the ways in which the Chinese uh, export markets and their, um, in, and, and their industrial strength. Uh, strategies are being restructured so that we can work on this exercise together. So if we take the initiative in developing concrete proposals, we hope you will then be able to uh, take the advantage and connect us with partners so that we will be able to, in the next six months, come up with a very concrete set of ideas which we can share with the two governments and with the big gathering of businessmen from both sides that here are specific areas in which you can come and make your investment. The last point I wish to make is of course a somewhat more academic point, which is related to the conversations going on about the debt trap. Now I myself have thought that the Chinese initiative, both with the uh, port in in Sri Lanka and with Gwadar in Pakistan were actually very sensible ideas that you have converted a major debt liability for these two countries into an investment opportunity. And you have bought in Chinese expertise and make them stakeholders in seeing that these ports are operated efficiently. What we should certainly be doing is to look at a number of our projects where China is involved through loan financing and to see which of these projects would immediately lend themselves to converting parts of the loan into equity. And even if we may not bring in Chinese uh, investors to directly manage the, manage the project, certainly we would bring them in as partners so that they would become stakeholders in seeing that markets are created uh, in China and elsewhere for this project to in fact become a profitable venture for their investments. So here again, there are a whole list of projects I've seen with varying degrees of loan, not all of which would certainly lend themselves to equity investments, but it is worth again, a constructive exercise which we should perhaps carry out in collaboration with the Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce uh, to in fact see how, uh, which of these projects could be in fact converted into an equity investment. For concrete, my concrete suggestion would certainly be that perhaps the Karnafuli fertilizer project, which in fact is a commercially market marketable product, may well be a very sensible area in which part of the loan would be in fact converted into equity over there. These again are suggestions. Now on the broader issue uh, of debt traps, 
people tend to have very short memories uh in my recent professional life not going back very far i have lived through a number of death trap episodes which were not related to china people may remember that in the 1980s a huge death trap was created for latin america through commercial lending by western banks in professional where life billions if not going back very far dollars. i have pushed on to live through borrows. a number of on trap episodes and they were, were not related for over a decade in debt traps uh, which took them many years to exit and then some have never fully exited it we may then again come further up and remember the debt traps of the 90s in which some southeast asian countries including korea in fact entered into large commercial short term debts uh, which were again pushed on them by by western banks who were ready to take advantage of opportunities over there and this was a direct and instrumental factor in the asian economic crisis of the 90s which was in fact originating in debt traps created by western banks and the final one i would draw to your attention would be the debt traps which were created in the uh, latest period which contributed to a global economic recession where in fact again uh, all sorts of peculiar financial instruments were fashioned by western bank banks and pushed on country the final one uh, i would draw to your attention ready to accept would be that. the and the most extreme example of that was the greek debt trap which in fact uh, accumulated to uh, over 100 billion dollars and which forced greeks into a 10 year recession from which it is still not extracted because in order to in fact actually uh, service the debts the european debtors compelled greeks to go in for the extreme form of economic austerity which imposed great hardships on the greek population so when people come and talk about debt traps we should kindly develop some sense of historical perspective yeah. because in order to and in see fact, actually what uh, service relative challenges were posed by past debts particularly those originating from commercial banks in the west and how far any particular country has in fact been reduced to such terrible conditions of having to impose economic austerity on themselves in order to repay the sort of loans which have been forthcoming from china in fact where two serious debt problems have emerged china stepped forward on its own initiative to resolve it by converting the debt into equity then this remains a very interesting possibility not just for these two countries but for many of the other african countries where china is in fact actually involved and i'm sure that there would be quite a number of african countries in sub saharan africa who would greatly appreciate the possibilities of converting some of their debt into equity so with these words i would again like to thank all the participants particularly our special guests and uh, the main commentators and of course cpd and uh, hope that this discussion can continue but next time with much more concrete propositions on the table uh, than we have managed to present today and uh, i would ask my executive director to take very serious cognizance of this suggestion and i would personally hold her accountable if in fact we have not made progress in this in the course of the next 6 months thank you thank you very much uh, sir uh, so uh, i think the responsibility will also be fall on on many who work on this area and particularly of course you have uh, assigned the responsibility on my shoulder so we'll be working towards this and uh, this is an area 
where uh, Center for Policy Dialogue has been working for long, um, be it on trade issues or regional connectivity, investment, uh, others, other uh, financial support um, in the context of uh, you know, Chinese uh, cooperation to Bangladesh and also other regional countries in, the, in South Asia. So uh, we'll be continuing this work and I also seek uh, support from the, uh, particularly from the Chinese embassy with regard to data, as I have mentioned in my uh, opening remarks also that uh, data availability is an issue. So we, firstly, we don't have uh, you know, adequate data, real-time data and authentic data also. So I think only from the official uh, sources, these data can be available. That's one predicament in terms of making any analysis on that and which can also guide us towards what needs to be done more. So uh, thank you very much, H and everyone. We started. One yes, minute. I yes. would like to address a remark directly to Ambassador Mahbubu Zaman. In the way that we have made a request to the Chinese ambassador, I would make a request to you that uh, in uh, when you go back to Beijing, can you take some initiatives in identifying uh, think tanks and research institutions in China who would be able to collaborate on such a project? Uh, and in fact, connecting them with us? Uh, sir, uh, is the question addressed to me, sir? Uh, yes. yes. Okay, you. sir. Yes. Yeah. Thank, well, thank you, sir. Certainly the yeah. major Actually, reference to the Chinese uh, ambassador but I'm also addressing a request to you, since you are now in, in Beijing and you are in a position to, to have connections and you should look out and go and meet with some of the research institution directors to okay. see if you can in fact connect us. Yes, sir. We have, uh, now the, with the situation uh, largely yes, sir, stabilized and uh, improved, uh, definitely we will be uh, interacting more with these uh, uh, Chinese uh, research institutions we already have identified some of these institutions, and um, definitely there is a uh, you know a huge amount. We have already interacted with uh, many, and uh, of course, sir, we will also provide you with the coordinates uh, of some institutions who would be uh, interested to interact uh, uh, with uh, you know uh, research-oriented organizations, including uh, sir CPD, sir. I I've taken note of it. Thank you. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone, for your time, valuable time. And uh, um, uh, we really appreciate your time. And we look forward to have your presence in our future uh, events. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bondo huh? Okay. Bye, Excellencies. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Excellencies. Thank you.